the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not his benefits. We give you all the praise as a house of faith. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we start tonight, I just want you to begin to count your blessings and say, Lord, I count you faithful. I count you faithful. If you don't have anything to thank God for, you can pray in tongues. But I know that God has been faithful. Lift your voice and tell him thank you. Don't be ungrateful. For the light, the psalmist said, If the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel say, your voice and give him all the praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the doer of miracles in our midst the mighty God the one who is doing wonders glorious in holiness fearful in the praises of men doing wonders Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You have not left us without a witness. We give you all the glory. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty. I worship you, Prince of Peace. You're the strong and breasted one. You are the strong and breasted one. I worship you, great I am. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. I worship you, Prince of Peace. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your. time I lift my hand. I lift my hand in worship.
to finish the curriculum so fast. Trust me, I'm not motivating you. God is in a hurry to let the world see what he has made out of you. The Bible says that we are objects of praise. When an artist finish, uh, when he finishes designing a work, he brings it out and then everybody keeps looking at the work and it describes the excellence of that artist. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. How many of us here are very confident about what God is doing in our lives? You are not guessing. You know that you are walking accurately. This is not guess again. This is not trial and error. If I will be great, if God will bless me, or if my father is this. One of the things that I believe we have come to respect in this place um, are the laws of the kingdom. Everybody say the laws of the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are a revelation of the love of God to mankind. So that your success in life or your failure becomes absolutely dependent on you and not on God. And if you take responsibility for your life, listen to me please, if you take responsibility, I assure you no power in existence 
you know some of them said if you know where i come from and all of that the only way to prevail over the wickedness that exists in this realm is to pay attention to the laws of the kingdom they were designed to cripple satan there are two ways to bind the devil one is by prayer another is by knowledge hallelujah thank you jesus tonight i'll be sharing on something very powerful building on what i taught last week if you've not listened to last week's message please listen again and again i think i've listened to it about two times or so extraordinary success this is very important this is not listen let me clarify something hold on this is not this success success thing you know there's, there's a way people behave about success you know that this is foolishness this is madness going nowhere right oh i'll be successful in this and that and that things will change and people jump and gyrate and at the end of the service you ask the person how was the service say, what I, I cannot even explain you ask the person now so what did you learn and what new decision are you going to make as a result of what you've learned say i don't know but i just feel it in my body something has happened you will never be successful that way christianity is not being fetish are you getting my point god makes you anointed and he he builds you with content there are many people with good experiences oh we fell down we got up wonderful but if there is no content inside of you you are going nowhere absolutely so it's not enough to fall down and say i was shaking i couldn't describe why my right hand was just moving alone wonderful unfortunately it doesn't give you a job unfortunately it doesn't make you great that is a spiritual experience communicating something we're not neglecting the operations of the spirit but you must have content tell your neighbor have content hmm. praise the lord so god is giving us wisdom god is giving us keys that will distinguish us let's go to work tonight father thank you tonight's teaching seeks to open us up to the dynamics of greatness i want to share with us in detail how god announces men and how god makes men great it's not just you will be great i want to show you how it happens praise the lord and i want you to follow me because you know i sense in my spirit i've been saying this thing like the ark of noah that i know that it will happen this year that a season is coming and it's going to be so fast what the lord is going to do remember the scripture i shared with us that the lord told me that will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side hallelujah thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting I thank you for lifting my head. Hallelujah. Ah! What you will hear tonight will so bless you. I'm no, 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 no. Don't shout amen. It's something I'm about to start teaching. <laughs> you know, sometimes these things scatter my head. You know how someone takes all of you who were in the world, who God delivered you and ransomed you from all kinds of nonsense. You know? Praise the Lord. You see a madman on the road alone and he's just singing and bouncing even if he's inside a gutter he's just singing and in his mind he's in a world all by himself that's what the word of god does he said i found your word and i did eat them and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul hmm. he said my son eat thou honey for it is good for you eat thou honey There is what you can know. You don't need anything to happen physically. Are you getting my point? It's like a farmer who plants, pastor. You don't plant a tree and then you come and you are wondering. You are so anxious. People look at you and you say, ah, will this thing grow? No. The man just goes to start buying bags in preparation because he knows that the ground was commanded to produce. Are you getting my point? so there are things that when you know you start rejoicing and dancing 
because for, for it not to manifest is like saying Jesus didn't die on the cross is that guarantee hallelujah let's get to the word of God thank you Jesus Christ what is the secret of greatness what does it even mean to be great really what does it mean to be great you know we talk about greatness what does it mean to be great because we have to understand in the kingdom what does it mean to be great hallelujah to be great means to have an enlarged sphere of influence to have an enlarged sphere of influence he said thou shall increase my greatness an enlarged sphere of influence to be great means to have increased access to be great means to have increased access access to anything resources people please make sure you write To be great means to have what? Increased sphere of influence. And it also means to have increased access. Access to whatever. Resources, people, opportunities. Hallelujah. And why is greatness important in the kingdom? We must get this. You know, everything we discuss, we discuss with respect to the kingdom. Why is it necessary? Listen. Listen. Do not let anybody preach you out of the sincere desire to be great. Because sometimes in a bid to show that we are Christians, we say, Lord, please don't make me great. Let me not fall into sin. Let me not do this. Kingdom advancement is highly dependent on kingdom influence. It takes greatness and influence to enforce the kingdom. You must understand this. No one will truly be able to influence this system and bring in the value system of the kingdom without increase, without influence and greatness. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus, for him to be able to carry out his assignment, he had to grow in wisdom. He had to grow in what? Stature. Not just the word stature there does not mean um, physical growth. No. The word stature there means influence. A time came in the life of Jesus. They said, all men seek for thee. He was on the mountain and 5,000 men aside women and children came. Everybody say influence. It is very important to understand the components that the prophetic agenda of God is dependent upon. So that we will not just be religious. Now, there are people who want to be great just because they have suffered too much. While that is not a wrong reason, it's not, it's not, it does not qualify to be an ultimate motivation when you come into the kingdom. To say, I've suffered too much, I must be great in life. That's ambitious, it's wonderful. Except for the fact that when you come into the kingdom, you must edit your motive to suit the desire of the king. Hallelujah. So God wants us to be great without greatness listen without greatness he told abraham he said i will make your name i will give you an identity of greatness and that greatness will call the attention of the kings and the people around and they will come to see what your god is doing he said it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the lord's house have you read that scripture the mountain of the lord's house shall do what be exalted above all other mountains and as a result men will flow to it until the mountain is exalted men cannot flow to it are you getting what i'm saying now it is easy to listen to a great man than to listen to a man who is struggling with greatness is that true so the lord wants to increase our greatness our greatness in every ramification financially spiritually and otherwise oh i receive what he wants to give i receive it no religion would preach me out of this no piety 
no sense of false holiness will push me out of the revelation it is as a result of the my love for the king that i need to gain an influence across the mountains that he has given me the authority to legislate so that they will hear the word of the lord distant shores and the islands will see your life don moen got it precisely that's what will happen to you distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Thank you, Jesus Christ. So what is the secret of greatness? How? I know that we keep, you know, the, the, issue, the issue I have with the body of Christ is that we do a lot of preaching, but we do very little of teaching. You know what it means to preach? To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. It means to bring you into an awareness of a reality. That's what it means to preach. But to teach means to give you understanding of the operation of that thing. Hallelujah. That's the challenge with the body of Christ. We do a lot of preaching. God wants to make you great. How many of you believe you are going to be great? Say me. Say now lift up your hands. Be great. And the person says amen. That's preaching. Wonderful preaching. Except for the fact that it does not work like that in the kingdom. That's not how your lecturer taught you. He didn't come to the class and say, how many of you are interested in having a degree? He says, me, oh me, I've, I've been writing jam. And he said, are you serious? He said, all right. This course is yours. No, you don't, you don't behave like that. Hallelujah. You sit down through seasons of dealings that will prune you. You will cry through the rain, but you will remain there. For the excellency of something that is greater than your pain. Hallelujah. How come life teaches us an obvious way to be great? But when it comes to the kingdom, we don't pay attention to the teaching of the world. Carry a weak hundred level student, pastor. As weak as whatever. Sit that student down for six years under a medical curriculum and you produce a doctor. Bold enough to confront sicknesses and diseases. The same person who will see someone six years ago convulse and be confused and not know what to do. Six years later, he sees someone convulsing and while everybody is moving, he says, no, no, I know what to do. Everybody say knowledge. Knowledge keeps you in charge. So what other people are running away from you stand. You say, uh-uh, I'm not ignorant. I know exactly what to do. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. May you know what to do in this life. It's dangerous not to know what to do. When the devil throws sickness, may you know what to do. When poverty attempts to come, may you know what to do. When death and all these things that kill men, if you don't know what to do, it will kill you. Don't let anybody preach you out of this truth. It's on the strength of what you know that you reign in this life. He said, rule down in the midst of your enemies. And he made two great lights. One to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. When you have that light, you will rule both in the day and the night. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Say after me, God wants me to be great for the sake of his kingdom. Say it again, God wants me to be great for the sake of the kingdom. And I choose to cooperate with him. I made some very interesting discoveries. One of my goals in life is not to waste my time on earth. One of my very personal goals in life is that I'm not going to join the crowd of people wasting their time on earth. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. Uh -uh. I choose to be like the Bereans. The Bible says they sat down to find out how is this thing done. So you don't waste 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of your life then you find out that you've been making a mistake for 60 years and you have to go back and begin to undo your life. Hallelujah. There are people who have time but they do not have the knowledge and the information to make them great. By the time they spend all the time in their 
dying days they get the knowledge but there is no time to put it to work you have time and god is granting you knowledge take advantage of it in the name of the lord jesus christ the secret to greatness in the kingdom is encapsulated in one word and i know you've heard that word but tonight just keep away what you've heard and listen and let's explore the word the secret of greatness in the kingdom is hidden in one word and that word is called favor write it down we're going to be exploring something tonight the secret of greatness in the kingdom is shrouded in one word favor ah, open our eyes tonight in the name of jesus bring the days of struggling to an end in the name of the lord jesus christ the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor hmm. what is favor favor means access beyond your efforts when you gain access beyond your efforts many of us have had a lot of messages about favor but many of them have not been balanced and so we know so much about favor but we see very little or none of it in our lives hallelujah the first thing i want you to know about favor is that favor is not a mystery this is one of the things we have been taught by well-meaning people that favor in the kingdom the fact that it is undeserved does not mean it cannot be activated thank you jesus favor means access beyond your efforts it means divine approval unmerited access favor is unmerited but it must be activated to walk in your life so many of us have been taught that somehow in the journey of your life, favor just finds its way to your life. You may wait forever and never see that favor. Although it is unmerited, there are laws that activate its coming. It is the operation, the, the dispensing of favor that you cannot explain. And I will tell you why. But the initiation and the maintenance of that realm of favor is absolutely predictable absolutely thank you jesus christ is someone getting blessed already the bible teaches us that there are two levels of favor luke chapter 2 verse 52 please let's have it if you can have it in amplified if there's no amplified no problem i want to hurry up because i want to dwell on certain things this is just an introduction there are two levels of favor or two dimensions to favor as, as revealed in the word of God. Okay, let's, let's just open up so we can hurry up. I don't want us to wait here too long tonight. Okay, please just look up so we'll hurry up. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in broad and full understanding, and in stature and years, and in with and favor with who and so the bible shows us that there are two levels of favor please get this there is favor with god everybody right and there is favor with men and these two levels operate on different sets of laws it is absolutely possible to have favor with god and not have favor with men and it is absolutely possible to have favor with men and not have favor with God. Someone getting blessed tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Favor with God and favor with men. Since we have established that the key the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor 
Everybody say the secret to my greatness is favor. Say it convincingly. The secret to my greatness is favor. Hallelujah. Oh, how true. How true. You neglect this truth to your own detriment. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising for someone tonight. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. How do you secure favor with God? This is the first part. Let's discuss it very quickly. How do you secure favor with God? We are being very mathematical in our approach this night. So the secret to greatness is favor. We are examining that subject since that is the key that holds our greatness in the kingdom. And we have seen that according to Luke 2.52 there is favor with God and favor with men. So how do we secure favor with God? Number one, you want favor with God, you need three keys. The first key is that you must have the fear of the Lord. Please don't make a mistake about this. You want favor with God. The first requirement, are you seeing now that favor with God is not free? Huh? Huh? I get very, very disturbed at the gospel that makes believers irresponsible. Just makes them believe that everything can just happen like that. No, sir. If everything just happens like that, God has to apologize to the little children and the countries that die. Is that true? If it was entirely God that controls the distribution of wealth, then God will have to apologize as to why a terrorist group will be so rich and a ministry will be so broke. Are you getting my point now? The heaven of heavens is the Lord. But the Bible says the earth has he given to the sons of men. The fear of the Lord Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Media, you help us please. We need a lot of speed here. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. You must possess the fear of the Lord. You want to secure favor with God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Let's just use um, King James except where we went from before so that we rush. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You want to be wise? You want to walk in wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It takes wisdom for you to even explore the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what gives you that access. That's where your journey begins. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It doesn't mean to run away from God. To fear God means to have respect. You can replace that word fear with the word reverence and loyalty. It doesn't mean to run away from him. No. The fear of the Lord means to have respect. Hallelujah. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence. Can I tell you something? In the body of Christ, many people believe in Jesus, but very few people have respect 
for him. It's possible to believe a man and not respect that man. Is that true? You can believe in your boss. There's nothing you can do. Open the door of your office. Is the one sitting there. So you believe he's your boss. But there is this reverence, honor, respect. Let's look at something. The Bible says in Psalm 25, Psalm 25 verse 14. He said the secret things of the Lord are not with them that pray in tongues. Not with Christians. Not with those who fall under the anointing. Not with prophets. Not with apostles. The secret things of the Lord are not even with them who have faith. The secret things of the Lord. The things of the Lord are with many people. But the secret things... The hallowed bread of the spirit. They are with them that fear him. He said as, an, as a result he will show them. He never said the things of the Lord. There are, there are many things but the secret. Every great man has secret. It takes only a fool to share everything to everybody. You don't do that. You don't have visitors come into your house. And your mother says, come, let me even show you. We bought a new mattress. Come inside our bedroom. No. Hallelujah. But there are certain people because of the depth of reverence. Maybe a worker in the house who respects that man. You, the person can even have sons that are irresponsible. But he will call a house help into his bedroom. And say, let me show you something. The secret things. There are chambers in the spirit, my brother. And everywhere is not accessible to everyone. Although we are in the kingdom. The secrets of the Lord. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. The book is there. But it, it's not everybody who opens it. Hallelujah. The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof. Don't just say I fear God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't leave you to confusion. You can know here and now. Right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, He that hath my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result... He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come, I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I there are so many believers, talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakatalabakura Sidabaladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5 verse 3. Can we read together? One to read. For this is the what? Love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there is the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. 
don't say ah i i fear god by faith even him he knows uh -uh. there are exact parameters you're not walking in his ways you're not living by his principles and his value system don't tell me you fear god when you can you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall between well believers don't in this side of god's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again but there are all kinds of things we do and we believe listen please and please and I, I don't i don't mean this i don't mean this to um to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of christ but i've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message if it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for god concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that god must apologize to ananias and Sapphira. don't you think so was it not in the new testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving god make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of revelation when god began to talk to them he was focused on their works i know your works i know your works is, is that in your bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into error there are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance believing are you getting my point let me share with you something that will surprise you dl moody many of you have read about him right D.L. Moody was a mighty evangelist of God and he came and preached for decades. When D.L. Moody died, sir, after 10 years, they decided to do a, like a little census to follow up the converts of D.L. Moody. Please listen, this is, this is not an exaggerated statement. Hallelujah. And they found out that only one out of 10 converts of D.L. Moody were still standing in the faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? I respect him. I honor him. Hallelujah. It was, look at such a great man. After laboring, they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings, only one out of 10 remained safe and were still in the faith. We're not talking of people who build ministries those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God what happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings and then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney hallelujah and they found out most of the great men you see most of the great men they were products of that man's revival when you got born again in his meeting you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life something is wrong with our gospel it's not incorrect but it's not complete either there are missing sides that we must couple together brothers and sisters listen to me god is a loving god but god is also a just god hallelujah what I've just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he's a king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops, they watch it and the moment 
the Holy Spirit wants to convict them. They say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now. Let's, let, I, you, know, you trust me. I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered, why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry that they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful anything comes and just throws us down because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of god is preaching and you get up and say i know better that's foolishness i hope you understand that god is granting us maturity but i am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth there are many other components of the kingdom What's the formula for water? The chemical formula for water is what? H2O. Is that true? Just add one more um, what now of oxygen. It becomes H2O2. What is that? Are you seeing that? Same thing that can be water now. For adding something wrong, it can become poison at once and kill you. Everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that Jesus kept them. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you, God is going to trust you with ministries. You will have your churches. Please don't be afraid of being criticized. You must stand and teach the truth. Are you getting me? I remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said, please, um, I have a problem with you praying for people. How do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them? Is that really true? And I, I just sent the person my text. I said, I love you. We see from different perspectives in the kingdom. And God will help us. We operate from the perspectives that we see. And that was all I said. Praise the Lord. Ay, ay, ay. Time is a revealer. I hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass time that's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet hmm. people just say you will never make it and God never responds and you are saying God God has already spoken time is a language in this realm it can speak so loud brothers and sisters when we started this thing you are seeing I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say it won't last. I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. And some of us look like fools. But he has chosen the foolish things. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Oh, 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 o
I mislead you and I teach you error, the God of heaven is going to judge me. Even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, ask for the ancient paths and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things. But that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. So as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came, just sat down. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working, this and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! Guy felt embarrassed, his, his ego, you know. And you know, we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls. You just believe that it means God has finished working on you. Is that true? And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, I, I said, look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness! How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them that they can never see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness, there is nothing wrong to accept that, oh, this is what I used to believe, but I've seen clearer now. Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we're talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James five verse four tells us this is the victory that overcomes, and it says even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him, and his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your paths. And then verse 7 says, It's a warning. It says, Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Be not wise in your own understanding. That means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding. But he said, fear the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words, that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him it takes faith hallelujah it takes faith in God it takes faith in God very important you must trust in the Lord Psalms 125 verse 1 he said they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken hallelujah very important they that trust in the Lord 
when you have faith in God, it gives you stability. Through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Where are we? Okay, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abides forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. It's not called faith. Are you getting me? Belief is just your persuasion. When you act based on that belief, it becomes faith. So the Bible says, have faith in God. Become persuaded so much in the character of God that you take steps based on that conviction. So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action. Write it and never forget. Because faith comes when you hear the word of God. So it starts with revelation. Then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion. You are convinced about this reality you just heard about. Convinced enough to take steps. Then the Bible calls that Without the action component is called belief. What many people are doing that they call faith is belief. That means not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God. Not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust God. So many people hear the word of God and we claim to be convinced. Let me tell you, in this life, the moment you are convinced about a thing, action is almost automatic. Hallelujah. A guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, it's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who kept saying, me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife and you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife i just spoke about marriage some of you have woken up now ah brothers you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar hmm. that statement you make at the altar is so implicating it will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that vow. Don't let your tithe deceive you. You are standing there just talking. Will you do this? Everybody, you are just telling everybody, I'm getting married. After the marriage, the rubber will hit the road. Your eye will clear. My friend, Jimmy says, love is blind, but marriage will open your eyes. Praise God. So let's hurry up. Number three, I'm going to shock you now. You want to secure favor with God? The third principle is the tithe. T-I-T-H-E. Ah. How many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with God? Even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe if you don't pay your tithe 
don't pay your tithe and see whether God will bless you. And you see the anger with which the man is preaching and God tells you, please, please, pay this tithe. Every church, every ministry, their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. My prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people. Ah, that would have been a terrible way to live. I would have been frowning at you for every week. What did you drop last week? You know? There are many men of God who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience. Can I be sincere with you? Many men of God don't tithe. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say it's blessed. Where you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer. It is alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt. Because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you see it on, on the... Don't, I'm dummy with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, no? Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one night. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens. You really think we are running this ministry from. The, look you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. At least you don't know your neighbor's home. You know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, 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 to get and all of that. And we were just saying, oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert. 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry account whereas that's somebody's labor somebody who is collecting 50,000 how much is his salary that calculate it for more than one year for being faithful in time I think I was talking to the protocol department they went to purchase something in Abuja and then I was talking to them the mixer we just got a better mixer very good one and then I, I was talking to them 
I think it was someone on my birthday, Pastor. Someone just, right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira. And the person just said, oh, well, thank God for all the words you are speaking, the things you are teaching us. And was just sending the tithe and all of that. Let me tell you, when you see what we are doing, because I know many of you sit and wonder, how do these people really get money? Yes, God is faithful, but what is the one plus one of it? Let me tell you. The one plus one of it is what I'm teaching you here. The tithe. If you are not a faithful tithe, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a tithe, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your tithe, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you are securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income that secures open heavens, favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with a lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. To be faithful in tithing. Say it again in the name of Jesus. See, the truth is, many of us are not consistent. Our tithing life is up, down, up, down. That's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up, and then tomorrow it's not God's fault. JC Penny, many of you have heard about him. JC Penny, one of the multi billionaires who love God. He was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that to a point that he was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you. Many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries. They are collecting 150,000 yet they cannot afford 5,000. You ask them for 5,000 they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day two tires just patch and all the money has gone. Just when you are coming something happens. Arrows that fly by day and they now look and they say sorry you need, you need this and that you will be spent and all the money goes then the moment the money goes the person gets well by himself. The devourer. 
and you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in tithing many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in tithing a solid building a solid structure small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the sinking back to square one there are even those that physical money disappears have you had that story somebody keeps one million he comes back and finds seven hundred and eighty thousand someone came for counseling i've never had that thing the woman said rats eat her money no serious I'm, I'm not joking i'm not joking at all rats you come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing i think it was either paulinensio or, or, or bishop david Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to i think um destroy a woman or capture one family and the woman shouted she took her tight booklet lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said god watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me at once confusion came on the people they were afraid and that was how they left brothers and sisters what you do not believe will not work for you oh i believe the word of god I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone, let's read. One to read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in. Seven million. And they just calculate use calculator 700,000 me go and give that man of God I, I'm not stupid Abba 700,000 and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and robbers will come and put a gun and say we saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this I say no it's only four no, now slap him say truly it's, it's seven where is it he said that's it here yeah. take it take it and preserve my life whereas the tithe of it are you seeing how many of our family members put us in trouble i say this many of us keep wondering why is my father walking why is my mother walking the truth is that they are all working they've never been driven from job but not even a house to build the mysteries of the kingdom there is no favor the heavens are closed so many believers operating under close heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight. No supplies. They beg for everything. Squeeze people. Put people. Workers and all of that. Under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down it was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department he said something is wrong we are not doing something right what is wrong hallelujah and the financial secretary said well sir um for about three months now we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous and honestly if we are to pay tight you may we may shut you down from tv and all of that and my brother said because of that you stop paying the tithe. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tithe as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say it. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs. Ah! No. 
as surely as the God of heaven lives. We have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely. Because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men. No. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances. So I'll stop here for you. We're going to pray. Just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent. Because the financial stress in our family. Is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect 1 million under a closed heaven. And you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful. Tithing. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God. They are not even there again. Your shop that used to sell, nothing is selling again because you think you don't touch for your business. Now the heavens are closed. Look at many of our parents. You buy a new gadget, you bring the machine, everything breaks down. This is the devourer, brothers and sisters. Let's take responsibility tonight and say, Lord, we cry for help. The finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses. Paying for damaged cars. Paying for all kinds of things. Pray and say, Lord, I want your favor. From tonight, I repent. I receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter. I realize that this is the key. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you read. I don't care what your level of anointing is. I don't care how hardened your heart is. If you want to experience favor with God, I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter. You must design a system around your life. If there are needs in your life, that's the more that's that's the more reason to tie don't say the needs are too much man of god is because you don't know i have so much needs i must do this and that touch your way out of that trouble touch your way out of that trouble eating your tight will only get you deeper i promise you you can apply every business principle you know fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family but you'll be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around it doesn't take time commit God into your life 
anything God is involved in must succeed. Many of us, God is not committed in the affairs of our lives. I don't want to know what you are going through now. Tight your way out of it. Secure the favor of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please let me challenge you. Create a system. If you do internet banking, you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever. Or if it is here, you tight. The, the, the ministry's account details are available to If you do internet banking, transfer it immediately. Otherwise, buy envelopes. Buy envelopes. I always have a stash of envelopes. Praise God. The treasurer is here. We created a system. I don't even see the tithe. As it is counted, we take it and, 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 and sow it to the appropriate ministry. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through? Didn't they go to school? Didn't they get all the degrees? Look at everything. See how helpless people are. Because they know not, neither will they understand. And the Bible says they grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Let's finish the last part. How do you activate and secure favor with men? I must talk about this. Spoke about three things right now. To secure favor with God. That number one, you must have the fear of God. The fear of the Lord. Number two, you must have faith in God. You must trust him. Number three, you must be a consistent titan. But when it comes to finding favor with men, the rule is different. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to wake up. I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight. Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, oh God. Daniel chapter 1. Help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability take note in them to stand in the king's palace it takes an ability are you seeing that he said those who have what ability to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace. Because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. 
there were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at brothers and sisters there is a price to secure favor with men can i tell you something favor is the currency to get money think about what i said very carefully favor is the currency to get money Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling, those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva. Write this down. Solve problems. Then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored. He found favor with men. And every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it. Write that word down, ability. Ability. This is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness. Gender notwithstanding. Background notwithstanding, age notwithstanding, nationality notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solution, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello? <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding that because I'm serving God, one day, great men will call me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Start reading your Bible very carefully and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that there was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king i have a question what will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness are you getting my point the reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. 
please hear, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal, but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me and I know that if not for the grace of God there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people. Not at this level of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices the gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men your gift can add to your age your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. We must understand this. Then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom. Say in the name of Jesus. I have an ability. That will bring me before great men. Say one more time. In the name of Jesus. I have an anointing. I have grace. I have an ability. That will bring me before great men. I have entered places today that my father may never enter, perhaps. I have entered places today that with all humility, my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime. Because of the gift of God. Look, when you possess this ability, they told Jesus, they said, all men seek for thee. All men, they will pay you for it. They will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you. And you will be surprised. You're wondering, my goodness. But there is an ability. And because they need it, they will look for you. There are 7 billion people in the earth. But more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions. That's big business, brother. If you can become a solution provider, you become magnetic. See the darkness in Nigeria. Look, let me tell you. If you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed, spit it on 20 people and let them get healed. And you will see the level of intelligent people who will come and stand for days waiting to be healed. Many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth. Please listen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful. There is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing the ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come. Not to you. To your light. That's what they want. Not you. If you think people come because they like you. There are many people who come for Koinonia not because they like me. Oh. You will be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews. You are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was nose diving, they say, I beg, crucify him. Let his blood even be upon our head. Please listen. Let me just advise you. If you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you, there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality. Many people will love you because of what you carry. Are you getting my point? see Baba Lama. there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life 
I will never be a failure in this life forever. I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness. You will be so blessed. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1, media, project it. I love the Lord. When I did this study, my heart dropped. I said, oh God, I'm sorry for all the times that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9. Eleven, verse eleven. Did I say one? Eleven, please. Verse eleven. Everybody, please read. I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now Okay, but time and chance. Replace the word chance with opportunity. Are you ready now? One to read. I want you to replace the word time with the word seasons. Are you ready now? One to read. But seasons and opportunities happen to them all. But seasons. Like the hand of a clock. It has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Did the Bible say it happens to some? Happens to everybody. That means there is a guarantee. Please listen. Somebody's deliverance is coming. There is a guarantee based on the word of God that a day must come if God is God. Where time and chance. You know how they do cooperative society. Five of us bring 20, 20,000. It's now your own turn. It's now your own turn. And I start smiling, although it's not my turn. Because I know that my turn is coming for sure. And the Bible says, time and chance. So in the equation of greatness, we are bringing the constant factors. And then we work on the variables. We are doing a little mathematics here. Are you getting my point? It says, time and chance. This one, no devil can stop it. No herbalist from your village. You don't need to pray about it. He said, time, if you are under the sun, time and chance happeneth to them. Ah, I show you a mystery. Ah, so time, that means a time will come in my life, whether I'm prepared or not, whether I pray for it or not, whether I fast for it or not. A time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. God's justice must be done. Therefore, the Bible for wants us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this 
this is where a lot of people miss it we keep focusing on looking at the day the bible says it will come remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day it will come the equation of greatness let's look at um okay greatness therefore in the kingdom comes by number one god margin seasons and opportunities together and then number two you finding favor by securing that opportunity i'm going to explain myself let me have somebody please okay Aaron, come hallelujah watch this let's assume this is spiritual timing and according to god's justice system okay stand here aaron please, that this time is going to keep moving are you seeing it now and that a day will come it may take a long time but that a day is going to come when it will come to aaron and if aaron misses on that opportunity it will keep moving again are you getting what i'm saying that's why if god wants to help you in life he restores yes not what you lost yes he tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made you can remedy it he never said i will restore the goods because they are not necessary once there is time and those seasons is somebody understanding what i'm saying now the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever. Every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the wine presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing John was sharpening himself in the wilderness. When the season came, he came out and he completed his assignment one time. Jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years. 30 years. Read all the books. Knew all the law. Did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years. So there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness ah bmw this and that ford explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming i claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you ah, and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened 
something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery that's why many people cannot give god glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you i'm a businessman i've read many business books so don't you think i'm just talking nonsense i know what i'm saying hallelujah when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of god the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father alone god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with i don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that i'll never be a failure in this life never so every time i spend in prayer i'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia the person will be dying of tuberculosis or something it's like that that's how it works there is always something you can exchange for and God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming somebody will be bringing koinonia messages that one is God's part of the equation while that is happening I'm praying in the secret place Shekata baba baba. Rakatabada. greater wisdom oh God you can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm Hi. if Joseph knew if Joseph knew all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said oh God, it is within your bail me imagine the guy that bought Joseph when he was shaving Joseph little did he know he would have earned himself a position forever imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with Obas and John the night he will come out if they had known that he would just come out never to return they would have said augusta let's pray father bless this man so that at least he will remember them beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this you can't speak english very well you can't do this and that and that beware let me tell you you know why because if you are not if you don't take time please look at me let's just focus god is just doing this thing if if you are if you don't pay attention can i tell you the truth a day will come you will find out that the same person you saw today you looked at her said mary what is there you will open an office that you feel from for two weeks there are people today who are angry with me they are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another and at those times they could say a lot of things call me when they wanted but i was doing something they were not doing we were all laughing and joking 
and today because of the difficulty in reaching me they pick offense it's not my fault i refuse to remain at that level i intend to grow be nice to people today let me tell you brothers and sisters for those of you who look at people in koinonia and when we say greet one another you just turn you don't know who you are turning time and chance he may come from a poor family he may have one ton sandals but let me tell you time the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time a day will come there is something god has put in you this is the justice of god this is why every man can be great time and chance happens to them all the day it happened to our parents they were not prepared they were there talking about others criticizing others and the clock passed and it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time took advantage of it and they said ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking he was drinking but he did something with his opportunity now he's a billionaire he's a pastor he's advancing the kingdom let me tell you something that happened in 2008 i believe i was in accra for a retreat and something happened hallelujah no i think 2007 or so i was in accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of god for the things that he was going to do and while i was praying my money had finished i had nothing not even to eat not even to pay for the hotel where i was having the retreat for that night i finished praying i was reading a book within the gates it's a divine revelation book when i read it, the spirit of god just told me stroll around and i came out i started strolling i was walking like a fool time and chance i want to share with you testimonies now the holy ghost just said just keep walking i was walking like a fool i didn't know where i was going up to 25 minutes i was just walking the next thing i saw a signboard welcome to accra city campus and the holy ghost said enter immediately i entered the first person i'll meet is the src president and the guy listen the guy looked at me and the moment he looked at me he said how are you sir when he shook me he just took his hand he said jesus he said can you come to my office miracle number one listen listen true story i want to tell you i know what i'm saying i'm not just making noise when this guy brought me to the office we didn't speak more than five minutes he started shaking time and chance and they ordered a meal i first ate the meal and then we attended their fellowship i sat down quietly after they attended their just like the campus has friday fellowship when they finished i went to his office watch this the moment i started talking i started talking at about two four we rounded up that meeting past nine when we started talking the university esco started coming to the office one by one they would come this one would fall under the anointing and remain there it was in that place i inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in accra in that accra city campus on that day i'm still in touch with that gentleman again his life changed there was they have their prophets like their maybe what you would call an fcs president yes after the the, the president would finish he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program and it was a powerful and explosive program I was even on radio the radio and they did an interview I think that was when we traveled with Bala Alex and a team of other people listen that's not the whole story when I finished that night the people came together past nine they raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now of maybe 30,000 and they gave me i didn't even know how to find my way back they directed me i found my way paid for that night and i ate a very good meal i said it works i remember in the room i was screaming i said come on not it has equal value in any land you don't need to know nobody all this godfather nonsense let me tell you get out of it right now if god is on your side there is nothing nothing you cannot get listen the night I was supposed to leave, those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel. It was within three or four days, their lives changed. 
they said what sort of person i taught them on the kingdom it was an unusual open heavens so the last day they invited me again i prayed with them strengthened all the people you know bless them they had impartations and all of that and they raised me money again an equivalent of maybe say fifty thousand and then i returned back who would have helped me i don't have any uncle but the gift of a man the time and chance is god's own equation leave it for him god is speaking to someone tonight you have been crying and say lord when will it come god said forget about the issue of when are you prepared are you seeing that god delaying seasons is an act of his love that thing you have been calling delay you are not prepared if it had come before this message you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years you open a shop nobody's coming god is saying uh -uh, i don't want you to miss be careful what you call delay some things may be the hand of god your job you didn't get the job god said i i don't want you to struggle there is something you can know you go for a job in four months you have become one of the executives it does not take time if you can solve the problem you will rise to the top all the days of my appointed time i will wait but while i wait i will sharpen the knife i will pray in tongues while i wait i will keep studying the word i know i'm going to stand before kings i must have contents to give them i won't talk like i'm talking before weak men i will stand before presidents a day will come it will be a privilege to air koinonia a day will come we will not just have one or two tv stations there will be many one billionaire can sponsor it for years but while that time comes we will pray we will fast we will travel let them call you a fool because there's no car what is car see a man came to mike modok because of something that he did he was begging mike modok to buy a car for him mike modok said i don't need it he said i i entered a covenant with god that every year till you die i'll be buying you the latest benz car one day i was passing around abuja and i saw all the mighty houses they were building around my tama and the holy ghost told me do you know how many of your houses are here no i'm serious god told me he said you will only build in life just for the formality the gift of a man the owner of that building will need me one day darkness is a mystery that announces light the world will be too dark one day they will need the anointing they will need it i'm telling you many of you have not been respecting what you carry i know what i carry i know what i carry it's an anointing of the spirit the nations can never 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 they can never deny the effect they may not like me but there is an anointing for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time i'm fasting i may be lean i may so carry but there is an anointing my father could not enter but there is an anointing there is wisdom there is the gift of god and i will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side there is a price to pay i don't blame anybody left now is to sharpen my ability higher i may not speak the kind of english you want but when i say it an anointing will leave you can deny my english but you cannot deny the anointing there is something see this is what i'm training you to become there is a sharpening you may not see it now the world will need you you will collect a salary of maybe hundred thousand but your boss will sow a seed of five million to get out of trouble your ability listen we are soon going to pray your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness look at me Aaron is here let me share with you his testimony permit me Aaron a bit for years many of you know how skilled Aaron is for years the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come 
I know times when things will get a bit painful for him. And we kept encouraging. He will be listening to the word of God. But time and chance. A season just came, brothers and sisters. Supernaturally, he got a job too. He got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna State. Within how many months, Aaron? That they, within two months, they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss. Now he heads a unit in Joss, and we're only counting. See, I think there's one of our ladies here, two of our ladies that I know. The moment they graduated, they've not even served, they just called them to get jobs. You may not value what you are receiving. Don't let anybody fool you and make you think you are wasting your time. A day will come. The price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future. You are already paying it now. You may look like a fool. Some of you, as you are going back home now, they will insult you and say, we are not seeing the fruit. It does not yet appear. But time and chance will reveal that I'm not praying in tongues for nothing. Hallelujah. This year, let me give you the last story and then we'll pray. This year, I was in Ibadan. We, were, we all went to Ibadan. And when we went, they lodged us in one of the best hotels there. And it was Yerima, Victor, and um, Sam. They sent me a text in the afternoon. They said, we are swimming and we are enjoying. And then I looked through my window. They were playing table tennis they were swimming you know they were enjoying themselves all snapping and enjoying and i looked and then i remember the story that same hotel listen in 2007 i went to that same hotel for something but i could not pay for any room because it was very expensive listen to me i still had the anointing but time and season had not come i went there I still saw the arrangement i sat down there there's the reception there brothers and sisters i was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil it was a friday night so i will attend the night vigil because i had no money if i touch anything i will not have my transport back are you hearing what i'm saying that same hotel somebody would have looked at me and said oh what failure Hiya. mistake big mistake you don't need to respond to those who think you are failures because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers and the devil says see tell him no you see just keep watching time 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 yes you may have an extra year write it and move and thank god because in that extra year you are still moving ahead see if a plane is moving forward even if you go back to the restroom you are still moving forward because the plane carrying you is moving forward. I stayed that night till morning. No bathing, no nothing. And a few years later, there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state. We came and we sat with this woman. We are still going back, I think some, sometime towards the year. We are still going back to our place again. This woman was astonished. The things that God did in, in Ibadan was amazing. The woman followed us to our hotel room. And we kept talking till almost, I think, to 12 or past 12. And she brought, she said she must show her husband. Her husband is one of the top police people. Praise God. And she, they recorded everything, me prophesying and praying for her. And she said she must meet her husband. And she just brought out a check, I think a check of 30,000 or something. She said, sorry, you man of God, this is small. But can you take this? I said, oh Lord, time and chance. It's not like I prayed more. I just kept doing what I was doing. It, when, when your season comes, the same thing you did that did not produce result will now produce amazing results. There are miracles that happen in Koinonia here that if we were on air, people will already start traveling. But time and chance don't worry a day will come stop trying to announce yourself there are many people on air getting millions of naira they don't have up to half of sam's anointing continue what you are doing time and chance a day will come 
God will arrange your destiny help us in front then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayers that's the day God will announce you in 10 minutes what the spirit of God will do you will have more than 20 invitations come for our conference come for this you are reading business books you are preparing yourself it looks like you're a fool there's nothing working no office only knowledge people even call you big head don't worry a day will come unto none of the widows was was um was elijah how did he put it now was the prophet sent except that widow of Zarephath? but the question god is asking you tonight before we pray when the season comes when the season comes are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy or will you contend they may be seeing the brother and sister praying and they say hey, you will know what you are doing don't worry you don't need to answer anybody just keep praying Aya. seasons a day came we we're doing this same thing but it was at the back of chapel no facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is the hand of god upon these people but a day will come so i stopped focusing about cars nonsense house no leave all those things from today i'm teaching you when you sit with friends and they say oh boy where now where will our level change just know that they are wasting your time time and chance it never announces to you that the day is coming you will just sleep in the prison one night and by the second night you are in a palace you cannot account for what brought me here oh i believe it for somebody i believe it for somebody let me bring a word for somebody you may be going through certain things you are killing the lion in the secret nobody knows you are killing the bear nobody knows a day will come god will put you in front of goliath and it will be in the presence of all israel on that day saul will know that there is a david some of you have anointings today that if it is to be revealed the world will run away don't look for premature manifestation let me tell you service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself you see all these things people say i won't play keyboard till they pay me you are being foolish you can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders at least the mistake was made in jerusalem before you now get to judea and samaria and make blunders there make the mistake here sing and go off key here we will laugh at you alone and we'll tap your back there are mistakes that great men don't make in the open no make it here make it here sharpen that knife who is god speaking to tonight because i sense in my spirit that we are at the edge i cannot tell you trust me i'm not speaking nonsense i know it in my spirit i've been telling you this for days i have been fasting and preparing for these seasons i have i have picked the signal that believers in this side of god's kingdom there is a dimension of there is a shofar that will blow in this season and let me tell you warriors will arise this i call it the zaria experience we will reproduce this thing in this country many people do not know what god is doing in this side of the kingdom you just finish your school wear your convocation gown or sit back a day will come god will say your season in zaria is over it's time to move like arrows like arrows in a man's quiver he will send you you will wreak havoc across the seven mountains that day will come pay the price now forget the name you don't need to be called an apostle or pastor or prophet it's irrelevant settle down hallelujah that's why see listen let me tell you one secret about my life i shared it with the school of ministry students 
you never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly no if you see me around there was something to do you never that you are walking on the street you just see me jumping around and say eh, corn or maize which one is hot no I'm preparing for such an extraordinary life I want my life to match the visions that I've seen in the spirit call me apostle thank God for the healings I won't be deceived I want to carry the word of the Lord with such a razor sharp accuracy so I will stay in the presence I will fast I will pray let me be lean today no problem it doesn't kill it doesn't kill prayer doesn't kill don't be a fool the suffering of the future is what kills the price today doesn't kill there's no job instead of praying and lamenting be preparing and say i know a job will come the day they do that interview they won't just give it job they will promote me at once because they will say where have you been rise up on your feet my spirit is fired up please jump up on your feet i like you to begin to blast in tongues instrumentalists come up everybody come on from the depth of your spirit do it for your future time and chance happens to you a day will come your season of appearing your season of appearing don't be tired don't be tired man of god don't be tired woman of god don't be tired prophet of god don't be tired apostle of god don't be tired keep pressing sharpen the anointing sharpen the skill sharpen the gift my season of appearing is coming they may victimize me today but time and chance time and chance time and chance hallelujah 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 the next prayer point i like you to pray and say lord i receive the capacity to build listen if you can't just pair yourselves into two find a brother or sister that is ready to pray and say lord in the name of jesus i receive grace to build to sharpen that ability as I wait for that day, come on, pray, Koinonia. Shake it, pop it, pop it, pop it, Shake it, pop it, pop it, The day will come. The day will come. Record, pop it, pop it, pop it, record, pop it, pop it, pop it, Report of the Kataka Papa, Report of the Kosso Secretary, Report of the Kataka, and your new capacity for the price now. Report of the Kosso Secretary, Report of the Kataka, Report of the Kataka, Report of the Kataka, 
Hallelujah. And thou will increase my grace and comfort me on every side. Listen. Listen. The third prayer point. You are going to attack every spirit, listen, of premature manifestation and distraction. Many of us want to be known. It's not fair. I'm anointed. Give me prayers to pray. I'm anointed. Put me on the stage. Nonsense. Stephen remained here serving tables. But the anointing was too much for tables. You are going to pray. Listen. There are many of us. You cannot delay gratification. You want to buy the shoe now. You want to buy everything now. You see people standing. And you say I must buy this kind of shoe. I must buy this kind of watch. Oh, glory. The word is working. You better keep quiet and pray. Prepare for the season. Read the books. Read books on fatherhood. Read books on leadership. Read books on ministry. Sharpen yourself. When you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, time to pray. When you are tired, remember your destiny drag yourself up i'm tired it's true that i'm tired but lekete kete rekoto pokata for the sake of my destiny si prekete ke parata pata ka prekete ke pokata ka bakata to ko i parato pata ka pokosa si kete ke parata pata rekete pokata pata i parato i do it to correct the errors of the fathers I do it to correct the limitation of my family hallelujah 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 listen anytime you see a nice jeep Go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. A day will come when God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books. I tell you, some of them will be bestsellers, but until that time comes. Let's keep preaching the cutting S messages. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Listen. Immediately we play these two prayer points. There are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus. The moment we pray those two prayer points, as we round up the last one, I just want you to come out here quickly. Because this is serious business. I don't need to cajole you. You need to surrender your heart. That you want to say, Lord, truly everything. So make sure when that time comes, we are going to pray. 
we are going to pray this prayer point hallelujah and you're going to say lord all the resources all the materials all the components i need to expose myself to in preparation for that season bring them to me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray all the training all the books all the papers all the catering schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to get. All the qualifications, all the leadership traits that you need for this new season that is coming, receive grace, pay the price, find the truth. Hallelujah. So, sister, rather than praying and say, There's no husband, why don't you sharpen yourself and say, The man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense. There's no man coming. This koinonia brother said they are not seen. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting now, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? Show me the investments you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until i become great oh, lift your voice and pray. hold my hand hold my hand through the rain through the storm lord when i want to give up encourage me when the pressure gets too much let me hear the voice of the spirit hold my hand the hand of the Uber that began this war that same hand that same hand hold my hand hold my hand when I'm almost giving up hold my hand when I'm almost falling hold my hand when it looks like the weight is too long hold my hand when I'm about to give up on destiny hold my hand when the husband is not coming hold my hand when the job is not coming hold my hand when the miracle seems to be delayed hold my hand Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses or you can take the hand of God and say Lord I'm on your side I don't care what men say let them criticize me I'll still be moving I don't care well they may misunderstand me why are you always praying in tongues like a fool no problem is it only books you will keep reading don't you visit friends no problem when the season of appearing comes the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him they were the ones who now came joseph said i saw the sun i saw the moon 
I saw 11 stars bowing to me. Those who criticize you, they will bow. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. I bring a word of hope to somebody. The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. You will remember this day. A day will come when you look at these pictures today. Tears will roll from your eyes. Because you will see that in a short time, God has glorified himself in your life. And you will be wondering, was it this easy? And I was almost missing it. The songwriter says, I was right at the edge of the breakthrough. Can I tell you something? I sense in my spirit that the clock is getting close to someone's life. I, I mean it from the depths of my his presence. And he says there is liberty. Hallelujah. So that in his presence, you don't go back with the same mindset. Not with the same infirmity. Not with the same oppression. Hallelujah. But you must insist through your expectation and your prayer. And say, Lord, I'm not going back the same way. If you go back with your situation, it does not stop God from being God. Hallelujah. But it will stop you from looking like God. Hallelujah. So in one minute, I'd like you to pray. Say, Lord, I came tonight for change. I came for change. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we trust you to change us. hallelujah hallelujah the bible says for without faith hebrews 11 verse 6 it is impossible to please him it says for he that comes unto god must believe that he is that he exists first and foremost so you must come here tonight believing that he is alive that he exists and then secondly, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lift up your hands and worship him. Inside and outside, just lift your hands. And give you praise. Much less one. We give you praise. How great you are. How great you are How great you are How great you are How great you are Lift your hands and worship him. How great you are. How great you are. How great. 
First Timothy 4 verse 15 First Timothy 4 It's always a privilege to to bring the word of God always a privilege Hallelujah it's always a privilege when the word of god comes there are exact things that it is able to do in the life of those who hear believe receive and act on it take note that the word of god comes to you doesn't mean that it will change you hallelujah you must hear it you must believe that it is true you must receive of the instructions that come with the word and you must be diligent to apply it if you do this no power in existence will stop the word of god from finding expression oftentimes the challenge is that believers just hear and they believe that because they have heard it should work and then they keep wondering why is the word of god not producing the kind of result that should be produced it must be heard it must be believed it must be believed when you hear the word of god and argue with the truth that is being taught you do that at your own detriment hallelujah the presence of god is not where we argue with the word of god you see the word of God comes to challenge our mindsets. The word of God comes to challenge our ideologies. It comes to shake our convictions. So that any other conviction we have that is not consistent with the word of God should be allowed to give way. And this is very difficult. Very, very difficult. Because oftentimes we have built our entire lives on our ideologies could be cultural it could be territorial it could be intellectual 
it could be as a result of our failures of the past or our experiences and all of these have become strongholds so when the word of god comes it doesn't come to meet an empty mind it meets a mind with informations already but then it comes to challenge what you already have hallelujah and you have a role to play you can choose to prefer what you already hold on to above the word of god and the word of god will return back quietly because it was rejected hallelujah the bible says "Doth not wisdom cry but if you receive it it is able to replace that which you have because the bible says as a man thinketh he said so is he in other words your life is a reflection of your convictions your life is a reflection of your ideology hallelujah first timothy 4 verse 15 let's read together one to read it says meditate upon these things all right give thyself not half-hearted give yourself wholly to them why it says that thy profiting may appear unto all can we look at amplify to see if there's something different it says meditate upon these things what things the truths that you have heard the truths that you have been receiving meditate become obsessed let them occupy your mind your life moves in the direction of your most dominant thought and so it says let them become priority in your mind it says give yourself to them give yourself to them hallelujah that thy profiting will appear unto all say my profiting will appear unto all say it again my profiting will appear unto all listen this this faith walk is not just supposed to stop the reality of what you claim to believe and what you represent should speak at a point in your life are you following me now it should not just be locked up in the realm of the spirit but that one day it will become apparent it will become evident unto all i am serving a living god his name is jesus christ he died and rose and gave me victory i have victory can we sing it with conviction i am sir i'm serving a living god a living god his name That we claim we have should become evident to all hallelujah it should become clear to everyone that we are truly serving a living god we sing it as choruses can i tell you why so many believers do not see the grace of god at work in their lives the reason is because we, our convictions are not strong we have not given priority to the things of the spirit we may be born again we may even be filled with the holy spirit listen it's one thing to be filled with the holy ghost but it's another thing to submit to the influence of the spirit hallelujah meditate on these things the apostle said i will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and are established in this present truth in other words once and again the holy ghost will keep reminding us 
it's not enough to keep learning and knowing new things the bible says ever learning ever learning but never coming to the knowledge the comprehension of the truth there's nothing as frustrating as claiming to know many things and yet it does not translate into victory in your life hallelujah it can be frustrating because a time will come your knowledge listen let me tell you your knowledge only becomes useful when it is backed up with proofs are you getting my point results strengthen your words they make people believe what you are saying when you keep speaking and after seasons and seasons of your life there is no proof of the efficacy of the word your word will not be highly esteemed in the ears of those who listen to you in the years to come by the grace of god we will still be teaching the same thing but it will be more powerful than it is now because there will be greater results back in the same word we are saying. see that years ago we said some of these things maybe not to this degree but it was the same conviction it didn't look as strong as it is now because the evidences were not much and over the years there have been more evidences and after 10 or 20 years the evidence the evidences will be so much they said this is a notable miracle we cannot deny it hallelujah may your life become a testimony that jesus is alive may your life become a testimony that when people stay with the holy ghost he can make wonders out of their life may your life answer the question that people are asking you you don't need to respond just walk with the holy ghost and your life will write the answer hallelujah so pay attention pay attention to the word of god pay attention hallelujah the preacher said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart guard them like a treasure he says he says they are life not to christians but to those who find them and health to their flesh i believe the word of god i believe that he was not joking when he said verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me the works that i do he shall also do and greater works when he said that i believed him when he called me the head and not the tail i believed it lord let us believe in you cause us to believe in you let your convictions about god be very strong your conviction about god is a product of your revelation of him is a resultant effect hallelujah bless be the name of the lord tonight i trust god that will pray i'm not so much teaching tonight what what i'm going to be doing tonight is what we call an admonition an encouragement a bracing up a reminder a recapping a restrengthening hallelujah because i don't want to just keep bringing so many revelations after revelations after revelations and then we do not see these things work in our lives i want i trust god and i pray this all the time that the word of God will prevail in our lives. Be it unto me according to your word. That's what Mary said. According to your promises, I can stand secure. Carve upon my heart. The truth that sets me free according to your word, O oh Lord, be it unto 
me Beat unto me According to your word According to your promises I can stand secure Would you carve upon my heart The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shall meditate therein Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that thou mayest observe to do to do not to wish not to sing not to chorus, not to argue, to do all that is written therein. And he says, if you do it, you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success. I believe this word. I believe it has the ability to change my life. I believe it is powerless if I ignore it. I believe it is powerless if I refuse to act upon the truths that are there. I believe it is powerless if I refuse to believe and pay attention to it. But if I pay attention to it, it would change my life. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For there's no one else like you who is faithful. You are wonderful. Only you are wonderful. For there's no one else like you. Testimony is a testimony. That's what is making your life become a testament. Is a testimony. Can you sing it one more time? Is a testimony. Is a testimony. If you pay attention to these truths that you are receiving, that will be your song. Is a testimony. That if you take the principles of the word of God and you make up your mind listen listen agreed that before now you didn't have access to truth agreed that you were born poor agreed that you were born under yokes and curses and all forms of idolatry agreed that you were born 
under irresponsible parents agree that you did not have the opportunity to get these truths on time agree that you made a lot of mistakes and blundered and blunders in the past agree you may not be able to do anything about yesterday but the Holy Spirit is still saying if you pay attention you can still catch up hallelujah you may not be able to do anything about yesterday some of us have made blunders out of our lives some of us have wasted opportunities some of us have allowed the devil to take advantage of a lot of things forget about that see all your pain of yesterday as the school fees you have paid for ignorance but from today it is absolutely within your power to make up your mind and predict your future and the greatest way to predict your future is to create it the word of God is powerful but you will never understand the power that is in the word until you understand how it makes people powerful the word of God does not make people powerful just by default no no hallelujah come promise let me show you three things that the word of God does it's an admonition tonight please pay attention let's call this guy a drunkard a smoker poor broke on his way to hell it is just an example irresponsible call him anything womanizer whatever just name it watch this this brother is the way he is listen to me because there is an ideology are you getting what I'm saying there is a mindset that was enshrined in him either as a result of his past as a result of his background as a result of the influences around his life so he grew up with certain convictions and based on what he knew to be greatness he grew up seeing other people smoking and drinking and sleeping around and they felt like big boys and he was attracted to their proposal of what they call greatness and he permitted it to become part of his mindset are you getting what I'm saying now he never as he is right now from the example I'm giving you he doesn't know this gentleman he doesn't know that there are laws in this kingdom he does not know that life can be predictable he does not know that it is up to him and the Holy Ghost to birth the quality of his life. He's waiting for mother nature. He's waiting for situations. Wondering why nothing seems to work. Hi. And then, listen, 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 listen. Jesus Christ. The word of God comes. Watch this. When the word of God comes... The first thing the word of God does is to reveal to him the inferiority of his current position. Because you will never change until you are dissatisfied with where you are. Why should I change if I'm okay with where I am? Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Holy Ghost opens you up to a new horizon through the word. And you see that life can be lived at another level. That there can be a level of excellence beyond that which you have seen. And so this brother sits under an anointing like this. And listens to the word of God. And the word of God begins to challenge him. At first he will resist the word. Because the word of God will make him take responsibility for his current position. And we hate taking responsibility. That's why we love passing blames to demons. Is that true? We love passing blames to spirit entities and say they are the reasons. And now this brother is finding out that there can be a quality of life. And by the way, when he is alone after drinking and smoking and living life at a lower level, the truth is that in his secret place there is a cry. 
Are you getting my point? He wants a life higher and greater. I've spoken to all kinds of people, cultists, smokers, and the rest. There is none of them that likes their current state. It's just that they have become slaves to strongholds and ideologies. And the word of God comes. The word of God comes. And after the first message, this gentleman goes back with two ideologies. The one he already has that says you can go back, join those friends, live your life, say it does not matter, allow anything and hope that one day things will get better. Or take responsibility and realize that the word of God can frame a new life. And when he returns and sits sufficiently under the word of God, something begins to change. Hallelujah. He permits this mind to be in him that was in Christ Jesus. All of a sudden, the grace to adopt the new mindset that is consistent with the laws of the kingdom. This gentleman now knows that it's not like God chose to make others rich and leave others poor. That's what mommy told him. That's what daddy told him. Very innocent, but it's not true. Now he knows that, wow, I can partner with the Holy Spirit and there is an economic system to this kingdom. Hallelujah. Then he now knows that being a father is not all about getting a woman pregnant and having children. You must be ready to take responsibility because you are building another future. And he's receiving this and he's changing. And while it is changing, his friends begin to notice that he's dissatisfied with the mindset he used to advocate. Are you getting my point? As a result, they will become envoys of the lower mindset and they will try to lure him back to where he's trying to live using scornings, criticisms, and all of that. They say, we give you two weeks, all this church thing you are doing, you will come back. And then they find out that he never returns. Brothers and sisters, in three or four years, this same guy will come back. This is him transformed now. He's understood that Christianity is not all about going to church and just singing hymns and worship and choruses. That it is a school. It's a programming. It proposes a new mindset. The same mindset that makes heaven the way it is. And when he receives it, he will now return and meet those guys still there. By that time, the other brother is already 33 or 35. Are you getting my point? His eyes already stained with drinking for years. His mouth, everything. His life, his liver is almost dying. And this brother comes changed. Everything around him is changed. You can choose to remain where you are. You can choose to keep coming for koinonia and enjoy the euphoria of participating in an apostolic activity that God is doing in a territory. You can choose. Or you can make up your mind and say, Lord, every time I come to your presence, I realize that there are two mindsets that war in me and when I come I am ready to let my old ideologies die it was because I believed them look at the way they made my life I believed that sickness was the will of God a mindset I believed that my genotype would never change I believe that I can just die any day anyhow it's like that it happens if it comes, give glory to God. But when the word of God comes, it begins to propose to you a new ideology. It tells you life can be lived at another level. Whereas you were depending on everybody. You've heard of all those kinds of things. And you, you are always hoping that people become successful. And then when they come, say, bros, anything. That's a mindset. And all of a sudden, the word of God calls you into a place where you realize that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And your mindset changes. Lay your hands upon your head and pray in one minute and say, I allow my mindset to change. Go ahead, pray. 
before your presence came and changed me pray lay your hands upon your head and pray and say lord this mindset must change it must change i received the mindset because i grew up in poverty because i grew up in idol worship but right now it must change it must change i received the mindset as a result of my denomination but it must change my mindset about finances must change my mindset about my life must change my mindset about the holy ghost must change my mindset about the body of christ must change my mindset about my future must change my mindset about my academics must change my mindset about marriage must change my mindset about purity and holiness must change my mindset about long life it must change i insist it must change i insist it must change i insist it must change hallelujah listen listen all that needs to change in your life is your mindset the bible says they limited god in the wilderness a man can limit god a man can limit god please bring this for me bring both of them here. if if this is your mindset watch this if this is your mindset this is all your ideology and point, point. this is all you can receive of god because that's all your mindset has allowed whereas there is so much so based on your mindset this is all of god whereas there is still a lot more are you getting my point if you will allow your mindset to expand the bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing when the woman sat around and she said this is all i have god said Todd, this is the limit to which i can bless you if you brought more vessels it would have continued he says go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and when she got to the limit of how much she believed god said well this is it if you give god a spoon he will fill it if you give him a teacup he will fill it if you give him a gallon he will fill it if you give him a jerry can he will fill it if you give him a drum he will fill it If you give God your space to walk in your mindset as regards success and your academics, he will help you there, but you will never see his hand in another area. If you give God opportunity to influence your ideologies as regards divine healing, he will stop there. You will excel as far as your health is concerned, but you will fail in other areas because they are keys. And I will give you not a key, the keys, keys 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 open different doors so that you are excelling in one aspect of your christian life should not make you complacent there are other areas the bible says genesis 24 verse 1 and abraham was old and well stricken and god had blessed him in all things the bible talks about a man called naaman the captain of the syrian army hallelujah when you read from second kings i think chapter 5 it talks about naaman the captain of the syrian army he said he was a great man he understood the principles of war but as far as living in divine health was concerned there was an issue there thank god for the areas you have gotten turn right now and focus on the areas where the word of god this is how listen when i check areas of darkness in my life i attack it like i attack the devil hallelujah Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Thank God for what I now know, but there is more. 
and I contend to bring light in every area of my life and then at that point there will be nothing short of beauty and glory from your life the first question God is asking you tonight is how much of the light of God have you allowed some of us have mastered the laws of God as far as living in divine health is concerned but some of us have refused to master the kingdom principles that bring wealth and prosperity you are just not interested some of us have mastered prosperity but we've not mastered longevity you must be able to come to a point it's a school the same way you take several courses you can't just take one and the word of God will pass you through a system of renewal and you will come out brand new and then everything around your life will begin to relate to you at the higher level that your mindset has adjusted to you don't need to change people you just need to change and everything around you will also change sometimes we believe when we change everybody around us then we will change not so not so hallelujah Bless you. so you must allow the mind of God to change you if I ask you today and I say Ken can you come and hold the mic and share with the house share with us in five minutes what are the kingdom principles you have learned as far as living in divine health is concerned you have been attending koinonia for a while come and share with the house if you cannot share with the house that means something is wrong is that true if i i call this lady come i won't don't worry don't don't feel come 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 come, come. i won't embarrass you i'm not 90 years old i'm a young man praise god if i call this lady now and i say sweetheart in five minutes talk to the sisters about the two or three major keys you think will make them virtuous women i don't expect you to stand and say hallelujah hallelujah oh you, you know no that means whatever you cannot teach you do not understand it you may be aware that's how many of us read and you find out that when you are in the exam hall, you say i know it but it can't come out because is still in the realm of awareness you see that there are three levels of understanding or three levels of gaining knowledge the first is awareness the second is understanding the third is mastery if you study like that you will do well many of us read and you know that what you've read is there scattered like like a software somewhere in your head and then when you see the questions you know you are saying ah bros is it not what we reverse it's not the issue it can't come out because it has not entered the second phase understanding you see that and the best of the best of the best in the kingdom are not just those who have understood but they have mastered what they understand Bless you. hallelujah praise the lord Say, I refuse to be a failure. Say it. I refuse to be a failure. It's not just by willpower. It's by subscribing to the terms of the word of God. You must honor this word. You, I don't just want to say word, 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 word. You know, we keep saying get the word. But the truth is for years I didn't understand what people were saying. I didn't understand what they were calling that word. What is it? Is it the verse? Because they say, get the word. And I was wondering, what is this Bible is plenty. So what is the word? Everything. I know people who know it off heart. And it has not changed their lives. Whenever you hear me say the word of God, I mean the accurate revelation of the principles of the kingdom. That's what I call the word of God. Not these vague things. People just say, get the word to mean just read scriptures. No, the accurate, revealed word. The Bible says when he broke the bread, not when he held the bread. When he held it, they were still blind. 
but when the bread was broken their eyes were open until the bread is broken it cannot bless you it was when he broke the bread and gave thanks that he began to multiply to produce in their lives hallelujah throughout this year so far this is this is the ninth month by the grace of god and by god's grace i have taught on several things my goal for the year when i was having my retreat for the year i told the lord to grant me an opportunity to minimize my travels especially on fridays so that i will be around and available i was talking to someone and i was telling him if god gives you a walk and you later leave that work because of international ministry you are traveling around blessing the whole world and you forget about your core assignment you are you are still a failure have you seen some parents who allow their wives and children they can donate one million during a fundraising have you seen that kind of thing and yet they've not even paid the school fees of their children no responsibility is to focus don't say my bad I'm not asking you to point people. Praise the Lord. So my focus, my, my goal, because the Lord told us that this is the year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes as a resultant effect of illumination. It's not just I, I'm walking in dominion. No. Hallelujah. It's not just I'm walking in dominion. It's that there is an understanding. And I hope that we are learning something. I Look, some of you who are pastors here, or many of us that God will trust with ministries, don't deceive God's people. Don't stand on stage and waste their time telling the amount of the shoe you bought or this and that. Wonderful. You can bring in little jokes here and there. But you must make sure the same way a student is taught in school is the same way a Christian becomes an ambassador. Are you getting my point no matter how complicated my teachings are if you don't understand it to act upon it i have not edified you hallelujah that's why we try to make the word of god as simple as possible so that we, my goal it's not to say, wow, this is a man of God. Joshua Selman has revelation. My goal is that you understand the principles. How many of you have seen some lecturers that are very intelligent but they can't teach? Have you seen people like that? You know they are exceptionally intelligent. But when they enter the class, you almost have a headache because you know you are in for it. They are intelligent. But they cannot explain their conviction to the understanding of the students. And you find students failing their course. Not because the students are dull. But the capacity to transfer that knowledge to the students. But there are other lecturers when you see them you are excited. Because they know how to make you understand their convictions. They can use stories. They can use jokes. Preachers. Pastors. Listen to me. Teach your congregation. Don't wow them with revelations. Teach them. Make them come into a comprehension. There are very little children here. There are old people here. There are young people here. When Jesus taught, although his teachings were hard, they were not hard because, they were hard because the power for the, the, the position it puts the people and the change they would they would need to make as a result of that teaching was very difficult not because the teachings were so hard in that they could not be understood he used parables he used a lot of things hallelujah are you understanding the word of god are you understanding it i thought i've, I've taught i think for for years now there are very few aspects of the kingdom life by the grace of God that I have not touched. We've touched on marriage. We've taught on, on, on finances. We've taught on leadership. We've taught on success. We've taught on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We've taught on demonology and deliverance. Different aspects of the kingdom life. Why? Because... 
God wants to equip us. Not just that you are prosperous and that you do not know how to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Not just that you are sitting concentrating on demons and you do not know that there is an agenda to, to be fulfilled. Not just that you are praying in tongues and you are not relevant to your corporate world. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many people who pray in tongues but you employ them they will waste your money and waste your time and drown your work. But they are Christians. When it is 12 o'clock in your place of work and you say lead prayers, you will feel like you should just keep praying till evening. But when it comes to principles that bring productivity, they do not know, they don't care. And that, that faulty mindset comes from we preachers. That faulty mindset comes from the preachers. Hallelujah. We take our limitations and transfer it to the people. So if I am serious about praying in tongues and walking with the Holy Ghost, but I have not been concerned about leadership, I teach the congregation that is not necessary. Is that not true? I just tell them, focus on the Holy Ghost and your life will change. And so you will see an amazing church with the power of God, but there's no excellence. There's no excellence. You see that? Then there are people who is all about leadership and corporate governance and how to do it and principles of church governance and church accounting. Wonderful. But when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, they kick it out. Everything is intellectual. So you have an excellent church. And they run the church like, 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 like a CEO running his conglomerate. But the Holy Ghost is not there. They are too organized. God cannot find expression. Not for five minutes. If this guy is supposed to sing for five minutes. And for any reason. God just feels like extending his grace and his power upon the people. is in trouble. No matter where they are. They must come down for the service to continue. Hallelujah. Then there are people who are not serious. They won't go for work on Monday, Tuesday. They won't apply for work. They'll say, I know my God is faithful. I can get jobs without, without application because of one or two testimonies that have come. Hallelujah. And they sit down at home. The children are getting sick. The wife is getting angry. There is no testimony of the grace of God there. Monday they are in church, Tuesday they are in church, Wednesday they are in church, and I mean from morning to evening. Thursday they are in church, Friday they are in church, Saturday they are in church, and the wife has one small shop that the man is eating everything there because he has not been taught that if you delay gratification, it can bless you, and they don't care. So although they are praying, they are fasting, but they are not rightly dividing the world. And so as a result, there are dimensions of God they will not experience. Every time they go to church, they will fall down. I guarantee you, they will see visions. They will prophesy to you, but they will not be relevant to the corporate world. Therefore, we must be built. Remember the teaching, the full gospel. We must be built holistically. And this is what, by the grace of God. Not everybody. See, there are preachers, the way they preach, if you don't plan to be a preacher, their ministry is useless to you. Are you getting my point? And it's not accurate. Because you now turn a CEO to become a man of God. And he finds out that he's struggling. And you say is that he's not spiritual enough. Whereas you are bringing him out of his grace into something else. So in many churches, the hallmark of spirituality is when you become a pastor. So CEOs, leaders bankers all envision times when they will become pastors ladies look forward to the pastors a brother comes they say who are you he say well i'm, I'm a brother one partner say please go away i'm not preparing my life for any kind of anyhow person because a mindset has been given that if if you are excellent and the preacher approves of you he will stamp you by making you a pastor but the kingdom is not like that our concept of the gospel is not just going to tell somebody Jesus is coming, which is a, an important component of the gospel. 
but it says go ye into all cosmos 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 i've said it again that the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone christ and his value system above a system that does not honor him so if you embrace the gospel it should do certain things it should save you it should prepare you it should empower you and it should release you strategically to be relevant hallelujah so that we now teach people that not everybody is going to be in the fivefold ministry and that the dimensions of the fivefold ministry does not end in the pulpit are you getting my point so when you find out that there is a desire for you to go into finances and be a ceo you do not see it as being less spiritual than an apostle or a prophet who is standing on stage are you getting my point now we have been taught that these things are of lesser value they are not because by and large the preacher will find out that the gospel is free but the means to carry it is not free hallelujah there are many men of god that have powerful messages to give but they are broke they are on air and they can only pay for 10 minutes while they are about sharing a powerful revelation they just cut it program over that's the limit of your money and when we ignore the ministry of kingdom financiers we can have all the encounters of the spirit but it will not be relevant are you getting my point now there needs to be people in the area of governance who can stand and advocate the confab just finished right now and i was so happy because the advocates that were were there to represent the kingdom are thorough men men of both intelligence and men of spirituality so i was very comfortable because i knew that the constitution of this country will be altered for the glory of god but assuming there were all these kinds of people who don't pay attention you go to a confab now and you sit down you are praying in tongues and you don't know anything about the history of your nation and they ask you a question and as a stakeholder representing the body of christ and you disgrace us there and say something you say oh the lord told me they don't know this they don't know this daniel daniel in the bible was a man who showed us how you can combine spirituality and governance and through the dispensation of three kings he reigned and he could not be rejected are you understanding the gospel now this is the gospel and like like azuka was saying now you see with his spirituality and his understanding he's going into the area of the media because he understands there is a mountain there praise the lord when they are kicking god and everything that is of god out of the media and we are here shouting and praying in tongues there's got to be men of power and fire that will get up there supported by kingdom financiers and prayer warriors but they will go they will be able to translate the ideologies of the kingdom to transform society if your knowledge of god cannot transform society it is a waste that's what john wesley said if your knowledge of god your knowledge of god must sustain the ability listen 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 if I plant a church in a region and after five years the community does not see the relevance of the gospel I'm wasting their time is that true believers unbelievers and everyone should attest to the fact that there are a people with a mindset so with time they see that there are miracles happening supernatural acts of God but then they see that with time a school is built for that community and after five years children who would not have the opportunity to go to school now go to school and you build the school and introduce new curriculums you know I've, I've, I've told the workers by the time God permits us to start building our schools there are three courses we are going to add you must write it from Jess 1 to SS3 number one is called spiritual growth number two financial education number three i don't know what the name is you must do it from beginning till you finish we're not just going to teach social studies and 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 and, uh, uh, and, and uh, biology and all of those kinds of things elementary science thank god for those things 
we must educate the people so that our children are relevant to society and still sustain the values of the kingdom listen i'm teaching you how to transform society not just how to build your ministry how to make your ministry relevant there are many of us by the grace of god the reason why our parents are glad that we are coming here is not just because of praying in tongues they are seeing our ideologies change something is changing about your life you are adopting value systems that are attractive when we become agents of change by introducing a mindset that can affect society then they will listen to our gospel hallelujah but for as long as the church keep behaving like fools on stage people just come and they see us bouncing and praying <laughs> moment we finish everywhere is rowdy rowdy there's there's all kinds of disorganization no system for honor no system to build people there is no structure you don't behave like that because many many pastors and many ministers we have not been told that we are also agents of change in the institution you see that we we are not we are not told that our relevance transcends just spirituality we have not yet seen ourselves as agents of change to society may god make every one of us here an agent of change in the name of jesus christ that with your understanding of the kingdom you will build schools you will build roads in the name of the lord jesus christ not just that you will heal the sick and cast out devils but that your understanding of the kingdom will be able to translate into something that society cannot refuse hallelujah that's what was happening we must build people we must build people sunday adelaja one great man i had i admire so much he led the orange revolution in ukraine ukraine is a communist nation even till today but that man, not very eloquent in speech, Sunday Adelaja was able to go to Ukraine and he, he understood the kingdom and he put the kingdom to the test and he brought the government to its knees. He showed how governance and the apostolic ministry, he raised a people. He was a great man, but he was broke. And he sat down and studied the principles of the kingdom and in six months he became a multi-millionaire in dollars and in two years he raised 200 multi-millionaires in his church from the scratch from nothing you think the government will not let me tell you let me tell you there is a level of relevance that you can command that even if you are not the first born in your family you don't need to steal any birthright wisdom and influence will give it to you Whoever can bring anything on the table is the one who speaks. If you can't bring anything on the table, you cannot speak any kind of story. Whoever can bring anything on the table, that you are praying, and the moment you finish praying, that prayer translates into wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything in life. Tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without. So tell me, what can I do? I can live without you. Hallelujah. Say the word of God is changing me. Brothers and sisters, I have a guarantee. You will be so successful, it will shock you. No, I'm telling you, the word of God is making you become something you cannot even stop. Hallelujah. The word of God. I know people here by the grace of God who were either of the other faith or came here with all kinds of mindsets. And I am amazed. 
I'm amazed to see what God is doing and we give him all the glory and by the grace of God days will come we will celebrate greatness at another level if you are interested join us there if you get there you don't find me you've not arrived there a day will come we will celebrate greatness at that level yes some of you will just go to your village and count the local governments there and say please this land build churches this is the budget for the kingdom this is the one to sustain the pastors for the next five years let me know when it gets to three years and it's as if you just gave money for recharge card because you have gotten the knowledge of the kingdom see see let me tell you something maybe let me digress this is an, admi an admonition are you getting blessed tonight listen do you know i was sharing with someone yesterday if all the wealth of the world you know there are people who are angry today they are saying if they distributed money it would have reached all of us in nigeria let me tell you something distribute the money in nigeria equally to everybody if you are pregnant you will get for you and your baby i guarantee you in 24 hours it will return back from where it came from because there is a there is a mindset the poor people will do the same foolish things they've been doing although they are spiritual and then it will leave them but the gift of a man the gift of a man the gift of a man by now you know that you have something all your life you've been told you are nothing they call you a lodo and you, at a point you even answer it yourself you believe it but the word of god lets you know that the gift of a man say i have something say it i have something that the world cannot reject i have something i have an ability i have an anointing i have grace i have wisdom i have insight i have intelligence the world cannot reject it and they will pay you for it they will pay you in ways that will surprise you you will see it happen brothers and sisters my bible tells me that if the cloud be full of rain hold on you are not seeing anything now but it doesn't mean any nothing is happening even the devil is a witness that you deserve to be blessed even the devil he's watching your commitment he knows he's a witness satan ran to god and said kai this job's issue god said have you considered my servant job satan said i tried i tried we will feed nations we will feed nations some of you will set up publishing firms that produce the bible in any language any see this is kingdom advancement kingdom advancement is not just intercession kingdom advancement is getting up to confront the gates of hell and there are tools that help us to confront those gates number one the anointing number two wisdom number three excellence number four prosperity these are all the tools that will empower us to confront the gates hallelujah praise the lord this is what god is making out of your life this is what god is making out of your life but the question i want to ask you before we continue is that are you paying attention to what god is doing in your life because i don't want to assume all of us are paying attention there are some of us as you are hearing this thing you're just rejoicing because you're part of the crowd but you know that if it's to be one-on-one -on -one, you and god you're not doing anything you don't even believe what we're saying it looks like we're just gyrating the beautiful thing about success is that it is an individual affair you can choose to believe it or not if you don't believe it will take care of you in the future but if you believe it together we will do great things for the kingdom hallelujah praise the lord that the lord will be able to use me to do anything he wants to do that when god wants to bless people financially i can be available that when god wants to heal the sick i can be available when god wants to transmit the knowledge of the kingdom i can be available this is my prayer 
I'm not just, I don't just want to be relevant in terms of preaching. So if there is no sermon to preach, I cannot do anything for the kingdom again. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was relevant when he spoke with the scribes and all of those people. He spoke intelligently. When he spoke with tax collectors, he spoke intelligently. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are four dimensions that we must all operate to see the fullness of God in our lives. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Just bring out your notebooks. Don't do it without me. That's always my prayer to you. Lord, if you're using great men in this nation, please don't do it without me. Oh, I'm available. Don't do it without me. Before I teach on these four aspects, can you pray? Pray and say, Lord, whatever you are doing, I'm available. Don't do it without me. If you're looking for prayer warriors, I'm available. If you're looking for financial apostles, I'm available. You're looking for career people who will do great things for the kingdom, I'm available. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. The Lord is hearing you. Lord, if you're looking for intellectuals, men who can combine wisdom and intelligence with spirituality, I'm available. I'm available. I'm available. I'm an agent of change. I'm an agent of national transformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. Revelations tells us that at the throne of God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, there are four living creatures four living creatures that are before the throne and it tells us the first living creature has the face of a lion hallelujah the second living creature has the face of a calf or an ox the third living creature has the face of a man and the fourth living creature has the face of a flying eagle and now realize that everything in heaven is a reflection of who God is. Everything in heaven. Hallelujah. Everything. The construction of the tabernacle from the court of the temple right to the most holy place. Everything speaks about dimensions of God. So it is in heaven. All of the things in heaven attempt to describe the majesty and the glory of God. So the four living creatures are four major dimensions that every believer who wants to reflect the image of Christ in his fullness must be able to walk in. Number one is the face of the lion. The lion is an animal that is known for strength, attitude, courage, dominion. The face of the lion talks about the dimension of your Christian experience where you must walk in dominion and authority. God wants that in a bid to reflect his glory, you must be able to demonstrate the authority of the kingdom. You must be able to walk as a king. Revelations 5 verse 10, it says we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign, reign, reign Hallelujah. Bible says those of us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, he said we shall reign in this life. Hallelujah. Say I am royalty. Everyone say it, I am royalty. Yes, this is a dimension of God that he wants you to reflect. Because he is a king, the royal one, and he wants you to walk in that authority. The centurion said to Jesus, 
and he got Jesus interested. He said, for I am a man under authority. Aha. Uh -huh. Authority. And by reason of being under the authority of the government of Rome, I can tell one, go, and he will go. And I can tell the other, come, and he will come. And Jesus said, I have not found such a faith. In other words, I have not found such a mindset and a perspective of the kingdom. No, not in Israel. Although this guy is not part of the commonwealth of Israel, I'm seeing him manifest an understanding that belongs to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everybody say authority. If you are not walking in authority, there is a dimension of the kingdom experience you are not revealing. You must walk in authority. Authority. There is a difference between authority and power. Power is the force that produces change. Power is the force that produces change. Authority is the legal right to legislate. The legal right to legislate. So good luck can say tomorrow is public holiday. That's not power. That's authority. The police officers and the soldiers don't have authority but they have power. So they can carry their guns and they can carry their koboko. They enforce compliance. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is that we have authority and there is an anointing put in us. It's called dunamis. Hallelujah. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that enforces compliance. That's why it is released as we speak. So Elijah, the book of James tells us, was a man of like passion. And he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years. And while he prayed, there was an energy of the spirit that compelled the territory to comply. Say, I have authority. Say it. Luke 10 19 says behold I give you authority the Greek word is exousia exousia I give you the capacity is delegated power the ability to stand in the stead of another that means the ability to walk in the shoes of another move in my office when Jesus gave us his name he gave us his authority the name of a man represents his office his identity that's why they asked the man, they said, Peter, I mean, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Where is your office? Hallelujah. When Jesus sent the, tw the, the 12 and also when he sent the 70, the Bible says they all returned rejoicing and he asked them a question. He said, when I sent you, not when you went on your own, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? When I sent you. Everybody say I'm sent. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. Titus 1 verse 1. The highest envoys of the king. So the king brings them. And trains them. Hallelujah. Prepares them. Teaches them his ideologies. And he sends them to go and colonize a country on his behalf. Comes from the Greek word apostolos. The envoys of the king. That's where you get the word apostle. And that's where you get the word ambassador. Envoys that are sent. Everybody say I'm sent. Say it, I am sent. The Bible says as my father has sent me, so send I you. Do you believe it? So say I'm sent with the backing of heaven. Say it, I am sent with the backing of heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching on the mount. What we call the Beatitudes. Or the constitution, the unveiling of the constitution of the kingdom. He says, ye are the light. Not of your church, not of your denomination. You are the light. You give illumination. Light of the world. He said, you are a city, not like a city. You are literally a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. And he says, neither do men light a candle, a lampstand, a lampstand and put it under a bushel. It's of no use. If you are a lampstand because you are, Revelations chapter 1, the Bible begins to tell us how that John saw. He turned and he saw seven lampstands. And those lampstands represent the Catholic church. The word Catholic is the word the universal church. 
the church of the firstborn the church that has no ministry name represented in the seven lampstands and he said in the midst of the lampstands i saw one so god is always in the midst of his people he said in the midst of the lampstand i saw one like the son of man and he began to describe a lot of things hallelujah so say i have dominion how does that dominion become a reality through the revelation of the word of god in you i told you dominion is not an impartation dominion is not something you claim it's not something you jack yourself into some spooky feelings dominion is a byproduct of knowledge knowledge and understanding psalm 82 verse 5 they know not neither do they understand and so they walk in darkness and the earth is out of course verse 6 have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but ye shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah very important you must realize that you have dominion but that dominion is there potentially as you begin to access the light of god's word it puts you in a position where you can walk in that dominion experientially hallelujah i have dominion over principalities over powers over thrones over every name that is named and my dominion is exercised on the strength of my understanding of the way the realm of the spirit works and so i can tell this demon spirit stay and go and when he looks he will see the foundation upon which that statement comes and he knows that i'm not just making empty noise hallelujah because every time i speak to that spirit and i say go there are many scriptures that support my conviction the bible talks about the angels who excel in light and excel in strength who confirms the words of his messengers and i am sent because i am a messenger so when i speak i expect the backing of heaven so don't just speak there must be revelations that sponsor your confidence if i if i turn to Folake and i say be healed what is the revelation that backs up this that i've said if there is nothing she will not be healed hallelujah so as i stand i remember that the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in me i remember that i've been authorized the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed not all day that were sick so every sickness is an oppression so when i tell her be healed i know that it's an oppression hallelujah hallelujah and when i speak and i say be free there is an anointing that leaves me and i understand from isaiah 10 27 that that anointing breaks yokes it takes away burdens when i prophesy and i say in the name of jesus let a new season be opened up to you i understand that the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn to appoint you know what it means to appoint to set a date for their liberty dominion you must learn to walk in dominion to exercise your authority and frankly speaking the church has made progress there we have done a lot helping believers to understand what we call their identity in christ which is very important that i am seated with christ I'm above sickness, I'm above poverty, I'm above failure, I'm above defeat. I'm not a non-entity. Dominion, all the aspects of our kingly dimension. But the trouble is that sometimes when if all you see in your Christian experience is just that face of a lion, you will get into pride and arrogance and you will never serve the king it will make you self-centered because you would think it's about you you know that when king's reign is all about them is that true every kingdom operates on a monarchy system and monarchy is about the king not the king and many people a monarchy is not a democracy nobody votes the king so when you have the understanding of your kingly dimension there is a disclaimer there because you may be tempted to think that 
all jesus did was all about you and you alone so god introduces you to the next dimension the face of a calf which speaks of sacrifice and servant so he helps you know that you are a king you have dominion but it does not stop there and if you stop there you will not reflect the image of the christ in its entirety so we have a lot of people hallelujah i have dominion and they have the jeeps they have everything they have all of these things but they are not relevant as far as the kingdom is concerned they are not doing anything for god it's all about me i received an alert yesterday i did this and that me me myself i am reigning hallelujah i'm going from glory to glory and god says when will it stop being about you and turn to become that of the kingdom so he introduces you to the face of a calf or an ox in bible days an ox or a calf was the animal that was used to plod the land that's why the bible says do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn so they used ox oxes and and wild animals all of those things to be able to thresh the land he says the field is wide but the laborers are few he said pray for the lord of the harvest pray that he will send laborers when it comes to working for god you are not a son you are a servant you see that you must understand that dimension when it comes to service in the kingdom you no longer talk about sonship as it were no you talk about servanthood so paul can say paul a born servant paul a born servant because he spent his entire life and went all across asia minor and went trying to advocate the ideologies and the council and the principles of the kingdom everybody say i'm a king i'm royalty but i'm also a servant you must be able to know this when you realize that you are a servant when you are doing your intercessory ministry you can do it sincerely so you can fast and pray for two or three days and not mention anything about yourself because you realize that you are a servant are you getting my point now you are a servant a servant is a property that is a dimension you must know about god thank god for being one with christ but if that's all you know about his image you are not reflecting him properly you must get to a point where you know that the same bible that says we are seated with christ said we have been bought with a price know ye not that your body has become the temple of another so that that revelation of a calf brings you to a point where you can lay down your life you can do anything for the kingdom as far as service is concerned so your money can go for the kingdom so you can inconvenience yourself for the kingdom as a man of god you go for a meeting and there's no ac there and it's a bike that will drive you that will that will, that will ride you to the place and you don't sit there and say with my status i'm a king come on now uh -uh, you're a king but you're a servant is that true and that although you love the lord you are not afraid of service everybody say i'm a servant say it i'm a servant i live to serve the king say it i live to serve his purposes i live to serve the king i live to serve his purposes it's not enough to know that you have dominion it's not enough to know that you are a king you must know that you live to serve the purposes of the kingdom hallelujah take your place take your place take your place take your place take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me so whatever inconvenience it may bring to you you are willing to go through it paul said so then death works in us that life will work in you although you are a king 
although you are royalty if it takes cleaning the house of god you can do it as a millionaire ceo and you know that i am a servant a born servant hallelujah praise the lord celebrate john it's good to see him hallelujah everybody say i'm a servant say it i'm a servant it's not enough to know that you are king you have dominion you must realize that the purposes of the kingdom will only be executed when you become a servant and can i tell you something when you take up the posture of a servant your gift for being a servant is access to light and revelations revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus which he showed unto john his servant you must be a servant to access that revelation in joshua chapter 1 god speaking to joshua said moses my servant is dead although moses commanded authority he demonstrated dominion but he died a servant this is a dimension of the image of God that you must reflect. It's not enough to have dominion. It's not enough to know you are one with Christ. You must realize that you are a servant. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Preacher, you are a servant. As a worker in the house of God, you know that you don't just come and carry your status and say, I'm a great man. No, you serve. You serve. Hallelujah. And then, the truth is sometimes as an ox when you serve you get to a point where people can break you down is that true the bible says don't muzzle the ox the ox can be hungry there are some times have you have you seen how certain donkeys get tired and even fall because they stretch them and so he introduces you to the third dimension the face of a man your humanity is also a reflection of the image of the Christ. That in as much as you realize that you are, you have authority, you are invincible. And in as much as you have adopted the purposes of the kingdom and you have pledged your life, don't forget that that is not all there is to reflecting the fullness of the image of the Christ. And the third face was the face of the man. Notice the progression. The face of the man why the face of the man because there are times you must you must permit your humanity to play when you are trying to reflect Christ it is not spirituality to hide your humanity so you see Jesus revealing his humanity he was hungry Jesus was hungry you will not be fasting every day of your life you are a human being Jesus was hungry Jesus wept Jesus was heartbroken so when you find yourself crying someone died and you're crying and someone said come on man up square up no no allow your tears it's not a symbol of weakness there is a dimension of god that permits that operation hallelujah so jesus hears that lazarus his brother is dead and jesus goes to the tomb and the Bible says, and Jesus wept. John 11, the 35th chapter, and Jesus wept. He said, we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. The word infirmity is there is the word limitation, not sickness. Limitation. Hallelujah. All through scripture, you see God using imperfect man. As a, as, an, as a system, not as a human being. Man, if you describe man as a system, man is flawed. That's why in the making of the bread, he said, add a little leaven. Because leaven stands for imperfection. He said, add it. Although it will be used in my temple, add it. The beautiful thing about God is that he does not wait for you to be perfect before he uses you. He can be building you on the go. Hallelujah. See, all the people that God used in scripture, they were not perfect people. From murderers like Moses to womanizers and killers like David to temperous people like Moses, idol worshippers like Abraham, angry people like Elijah, emotional people like Ezekiel. Hallelujah. 
erratic people like Peter, unstable people like Thomas. Hallelujah. Yet, in the midst of their imperfections, his purposes still came to pass. This is what makes him mighty. The ability to birth his purposes in spite of your limitations. Everybody say, I'm human. Say, I'm human. The man that pioneered the Welsh revival, the man that pioneered the Welsh revival, died not because it was his time. He died because he understood that he had dominion and he knew that he was a servant serving the king, but he forgot that he was a human being. It was said he literally walked himself to death because he believed that if he did not frontier the revival, it would be corrupted. So based on his fear of the revival being corrupted and then the corruption now attributed to him, he took his humanity, I mean he forgot about his humanity and he died. Do you know there are many Jews and great men that died before their time because they want to win the whole world. They have over 30 or 40 ministrations in a week flying all around and they are tired i used to be like that until the day god gave me this revelation i literally killed myself because i believed that i didn't want to fail god there are times that i would pray for hours i would spend time and then when i'm about to go and rest somebody will now send me a text that's where the person has finished sleeping wipe sleep from his eyes and they will they will say very very attractive things like god sent you to us and you know i'll feel that burden of ministry now uh -huh. when i finish praying if your text come if the one who created the heavens and the earth does not save you i will not kill myself Uza went to help the ark and he died but the ark never fell hallelujah so be careful because some of us are literally killing ourselves you are priding in the fact that you are getting lean you have convinced yourself that it's a sign that you are spiritual that when men see you and your voice is husky your face is oily the, the, your appearance there's nothing to be desired about it you equate it to spirituality not so there is a dimension of your humanity and god rested god rested and the proof of rest is that you cease from your work you must rest if you plan to use your body for a long time you must create a system i used to say yes to every ministration jack of all trade going to win the whole world and one day the lord gave me a revelation he told me to look at a cross and he said your face is not the one on the crucifix you didn't die no i mean it very seriously and it dawned on me that I'm only a member of the body, not the body. So the best that I can be is an effective member of the body. There are many men whose families have gone down the drain because they are doing ministry. The children never get to see their father. The husband never gets to spend time with the wife. John Lake, how many of you have heard of John G. Lake? When John G. Lake's wife was about to die, John G. Lake's daughter said, if John Lake was around, the mother would not die because he was there trying to save the world. His wife was dying. The daughters wanted their father, but he was there becoming a lion and becoming an ox. And he forgot that he was a human being. And he came back to meet the obituary of his wife. Everybody say, I'm human. Say it, I'm human. It's okay to cry. Yes. It's okay to make mistakes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's alright to make mistakes. Samson allowed his humanity to go to the extreme when he followed a woman called Delilah. So I'm talking about the extremities of humanity because some of you, this part of it has consoled you so much. 
you are saying are you kidding so i'm human so you can just do everything and say i'm human i beg i'm human slept with the lady i'm human i took the beer i'm human samson allowed his humanity to go so far and two things happened to him and it will happen to anybody who allows his humanity to prevail over his spirituality your source of illumination will be taken and your glory will be taken from your life two things the hair of a man the bible talks of a woman's hair being the glory that means man as the bride of christ has his hair representing his glory and the bible says two things she was not interested you would think that delilah would cut off the hands of samson is that not what he uses to beat people he said immediately remove his eyes because if thy eye be single your whole body will be full of light so when you allow excessive humanity there will be no illumination so you don't fast again you don't pray you don't constrain yourself because you feel i'm human the source of illumination will grow dim that's what happened to eli eli began to be so conscious of his old age he allowed his humanity to interrupt his priesthood and the bible says his eye began to become dim And it takes us to the fourth phase, the face of the flying eagle. So although you are human, less you allow your humanity to cross beyond its boundary, it reminds you that you are from above, the flying eagle. That there is a technology in the spirit that is able to remedy for the predicaments of your humanity. And then the Bible now begins to say, I know that even the young man can grow weary. The youth can faint. I know there is a provision for your humanity. It's not backsliding. I know there is a time you cannot pray. It's, it's natural. I know there is a time you may not want to study the word. There is a time challenges will overwhelm you. But it says there is a technology in the spirit that has been made available to supplement for that predicament. It says they that wait upon the Lord. It said they shall renew their strength. And they will mount up with wings, not like birds, like the eagle. That was the eagle there. They will mount up with wings, like the eagles. So when men see your humanity, and they see that you are perplexed on all sides, everything is happening and it looks like you will never come out. All of a sudden, you sustain the technology in the spirit. We will run and not grow weary. We'll walk and we'll not faint For the Lord will go before us And His joy will be our strength Mounting up with wings as eagles As the Spirit says His soul We will come into His presence We'll wait upon the Lord You know the song? We will wait upon the Lord Oh, hallelujah! For in His presence is fullness of joy, and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Yeah, that's the technology in the spirit. So the guy disappoints you, and he said, "I won't marry you again." Oh. I've just been looking for a way to tell you and although you are a great woman of God you will see your humanity find an expression you will cry and then when you come for koinonia like this you hear songs like this and it's a technology in the spirit that begins to mount you up with wings as an eagle and like Job you say though he slay me yet will I praise him all the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change comes the Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Oh, powerful. Can we sing that song? We will wait. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence, this fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored. As we wait upon the Lord. Just
just a voice is alone. Sing. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence is fullness of joy. And our strength shall be restored. As we wait upon the Lord. So your rent is overdue. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. Time has gone and marriage doesn't look like it's coming. You are now 36, 37. It's okay to be human. Hallelujah. You've been wearing one trouser for the past five months. It's okay to worry about it. Don't say I don't care. Care is okay. Hallelujah. Every guy you smile at is frowning at you. You are a human being. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. You started a church and after three years you are just seven. It will disturb you. No matter how a man of faith you are. It's okay. You trusted God that at this level of your life you will be soaring financially but it looks like it's not so. It's okay. You are human. But remember that you are also a flying eagle. And it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And so they held Samson bound in his hands. And that was a symbol of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. And not much could be done. Because the Philistines held these two ministries that represent the foundation of the church. But the Bible says, all of a sudden the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he was no longer a human being. And the Bible says, the rope was like flask. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come live in me and I will rise on you. Sing it one more time. Come live That's how you rise when you allow the anointing of the spirit to open you up to the dimension where you are a flying eagle from glory to glory and now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you Now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. So tonight is an admonition. He said, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things, although ye already know them, and I established in this present truth. It says no man that worries and tangles himself with civilian affairs the Bible says meditate on these things give yourself only to them that your profiting will appear unto all we are going to pray listen listen there are many teachings that have come that can minister to every area of your life that you desire growth and these messages are all free 
from finances to your relationship with the Holy Spirit to understanding the kingdom to marriage to success to greatness to faith you can access the resources and stay there stay in the presence until something breaks open rise up on your feet and we're going to pray all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh. come on give him praise the truths you are hearing will make you mighty all the glory belongs all the glory belongs to you, oh God. Come on, celebrate His majesty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Three prayer points and we are done for the night. Please help that lady. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray and say, Father, cause your word to prevail. Listen, listen, listen. Until your convictions about the reality of the word transcends that which you see, you cannot produce faith. I've told you, this nonsense that is taught about faith is not the way faith works. Faith does not just work by jacking yourself into nonsense. Faith is a derivative of the depth of your conviction about the reality of God and his word and it's entirely a product of revelation lift your voice and say Lord strengthen my conviction about spiritual things lift your voice and pray strengthen my conviction Strengthen my conviction about the reality of your word, the reality of your power, the reality of the anointing, the reality of your principles, the immutability of your counsel. Let my convictions be strengthened. They that know their God, they that know their God, they that have experienced Him, shall be strong, empowered with might, and He said they will do exploits. They that know their God. Oh yes, pray. When your conviction becomes strong, you will do exploits in ministry. You will do exploits on your job. You will do exploits in business. You will do exploits in leadership. You will take the mountains and confront the gates and stamp upon the gates of the enemy. Strengthen my convictions. Where my convictions are shaking, strengthen my conviction. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen. The dimension of the glory and the power of God that is released in your life is dependent on the strength of your conviction about spiritual realities. Hallelujah. When you realize, it's not enough to know that the spirit of the Christ lives in you. Do you know the implication of what that means? It's not enough to know that you are a success. Do you know the implication? Strengthen my convictions. Strengthen my convictions. You are going to pray. Mention the areas of your life where you are not yet convicted, where the word of God has not gained ground and say, Lord, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. For some of us, it's in the area of finance. Some of us, is in the area of marriage. Some of us, is in the area of our strength. Some of us, is in the area of your job. Lift up your voice and pray. Strengthen my conviction. Deepen my roots. Deepen my roots. Let me understand the system of the kingdom. Shekete te ba 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 ba. Rakata prate koskoba. 
you praying inside and outside pray Shake up our coso to pokota rakata ba leke te frente ke te bele de bosh rapo oto subana ba shike te le baka strengthen my conviction the bible says be unshakable be immovable be steadfast be unshakable be immovable Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. The Bible says that we have been made objects of praise. Objects of praise. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called forth to show forth is the greek word doxazo is a displaying of the excellency of the kingdom of him the perfections of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light you're going to pray and say lord put a seal upon my life that will make me a testimony put a seal stamp my life with your anointing stamp my life with your wisdom Come on, pray. Put a seal upon my life that will cause the nations to know that Jehovah reigns in my life. Make me an object of praise. Put a seal. Come on, pray, Koinonia. Put a seal upon my life. Let your hand come upon me. Let your hand come upon me. Let your wisdom come upon me. Let your excellence come upon me. Let your glory come upon me. Stamp it upon my life. I am an object of praise. Soto porekesh engre tekele kato soto mahaba. Sopo pretis kele boshata. Oh yes, yes. Let my life be supernatural. Everything supernatural. Stamp it upon my life. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen to me. The Bible says, and when Jesus came out of the water, it says the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. There was a stamp and a voice spoke. It didn't speak to men. It spoke to territories. He said, this is my beloved and I instruct you to hear him. In other words, let gates be opened. Let barriers be broken. This has been approved. He said, Paul, an apostle, approved by signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to pray and say, Lord, approve my life. Approve my life. Let there be a demonstration of the reality of spiritual things. Pray. Sheketeka. Sombetalikata. E prata shiketele. Let there be a divine stamp upon my life, upon my ministry, upon my business, upon my job, upon my family that testifies, that testifies, that testifies that Jehovah reigns, that testifies. That his kingdom is superior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we are out of time the last prayer point we are going to pray for our families in preparation listen next week miracle service is going to be an explosion I'm telling you what the Lord put in my spirit to share is mighty mighty God will do awesome things in this place we are going to pray and say father right upon my family let there be a testament that the glory of God is upon my family you're not praying for yourself come on believers pray as for me and my house as for me and my house if it does not affect your family then it is not complete right oh god right oh god let there be a testament of your glory a testament of your beauty a testament of your power a testament of your wisdom a testament of your grace pray for your family intercede in two minutes intercede i cover for them i come as an end for an end for of the kingdom an end for of the present a sent one an ambassador let there be light in every area of darkness i appoint unto them that mourn in my family i set for them beauty for ashes joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified pray prophesy pray declare pray job 22 verse 28 and thou shalt decree thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established Oh, let your glory come. Let your glory come upon my family. Let your glory come. Let there be an evidence. Let there be an evidence of the living Christ. Let there be an evidence of the glory of God. at me I'm going to make an altar call there is a gentleman that sent me a text that he wants to get born again now is the time when I finish talking you can run and come out but I want to make an altar call there are many of us standing here we are the hope of our families we are the hope of our territories if we miss it the purposes of God may be thwarted for our families and God needs us to be envoys. There are two categories of people who will run out here. Number one, those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. I don't care if you have been in church all your life. You have never made that commitment to say, Lord, I want to start a journey with you. That you write my name in the book of life and that I receive eternal life. That's the first category. The second category of people are those who are backslidden. And those who have found themselves derailing from the things of God. You were once on fire and you love God. But now you are even surprised seeing the way your life is. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Hallelujah. And so as I count one to five, we are out of time. I like those two categories of people. 
to come out quickly and stand before the Lord and it will be my privilege to lead you and reconnect you back I know that there are a number of us outside I know that there are people standing it's not compulsory you can choose to stay but there are people the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now and he's saying it's time come out quickly one celebrate them I know that there are many people don't wait for anybody you are the first person two please if you're coming hurry up hurry up three God bless you don't let any devil stop you four I salute every one of us listen for taking the courage to come to Jesus Christ the Bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away hallelujah this is like a, a factory this is a making process and I want you to mean it don't just come out here and be emotional mean it from the depths of your heart this is between you and Jesus Christ this is birthing a relationship that will make you a sign and a wonder lift up your right hand and from the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. And those of us in the congregation, while they are praying, I'd like you to join them in prayer. Pray in tongues for them. Lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for my sins. I have heard your word today. I make Jesus Lord of my life I accept him as Savior and I declare that I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I'm a child of God my name is in the book of life I receive grace to live in victory I denounce sin I denounce the works of darkness and I receive grace to rise beyond these things from today I'm a child of God the life of God is in me keep your hands lifted and let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit Holy Spirit I ask in the name of your son Jesus Christ that you will find expression in the lives of these people. Make them mighty men and women of the spirit. Plant in them hunger for spiritual things. Make it impossible for them to go back to their old lives. I set you free from all kinds of addictions. I set you free from all kinds of demonic things. That stand your way to living a victorious life. And I declare that there is grace upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Congratulations. God bless you for making this great decision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to follow the lady waving her hands. That usher waving her hands. The ushers will meet with you. They will have your details and will get across to you. God bless you. Please follow them. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let me welcome all the first timers and then we we'll invite Prophet Jangfa to come and just say hi to the house and pray and round up the meeting. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know him. Praise the Lord. If you are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time, I'd like you to jump up on your feet and come out gloriously. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Come on, celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Wherever you are, inside and outside. We love you too much to leave you like that. We have a blessing for you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. God bless you. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. 
let's invite prophet jangfa god bless you celebrate him everybody come on now is this how you honor great men hallelujah it's good to be here again praise god amen it's it's good to see the awesome things that the spirit of the lord is doing in this place and i tell you i'm excited to be here tonight amen god bless you my wife and family sends your love to you amen god bless you hallelujah for the first time as please lift up your hands let me pray for you and every one of you just lift up your hands father we thank you for this precious people in the name of jesus we declare the blessings of the lord over you tonight we declare that as you go let the blessings of the lord follow you let the spirit of the almighty god go with you let the glory of the lord mantle you tonight we declare that as you go the earth is subdued before you as you go the earth yield an increase for you we declare that the dew of the heavens follow you we declare that kings shall be your nursing fathers queens shall be your nursing mothers they shall kiss the doors of your feet we declare that you wash your feet with butter let the rock pour you rivers of oil let the hand of the almighty god go with you let the earth yield the increase to you we declare you blessed today let the anointing rest upon you let the glory of the lord go with you in the name of jesus you shall go for the joy be led for the peace the mountains and the hills shall break forth with singing before you the trees of the forest shall clap their hands you are blessed in the name of jesus i activate the glory of god upon you i declare the presence of god go with you the increase of the heavens is upon you the blessings of the sun is upon you the blessings of the sea is upon you you are blessed in the name of jesus you are prosperous in the name of jesus you are blessed the lord bless you and keep you the lord cause his face to shine upon you the lord be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace and grant you peace i declare nothing is missing in your life nothing is broken in your life the hand of the lord is upon you the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night the arrows of the wicked shall not come near you only with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked god bless you god bless you god bless you the lord cause the mountains to skip before you let every jordan pass before you let the mountains pour you oil i declare you blessed 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 go and prosper go and multiply go and replenish the earth go and have dominion experience miracles experience miracles experience supernatural turn around in your lives in your academics in your families be blessed be blessed be empowered to succeed to prosper to increase the anointing is upon you the glory of god is upon you the miracle power is upon you in the name of jesus god bless you you are blessed as you go the presence of the lord go with you the lord take away every difficulty from your life the lord subdues obstacle before you in the name of jesus i mean the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us All the dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page 
for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.